Tom Vassell's Top 100 Games of All Time. C-R-C, voice of the people. Hello! Hey. We're back at it! Of planet Earth! <laughs> We're back at yeah. it! Hello! I'm Tom Basil. I'm Mike Delicio. I'm Roy Caddy. I'm Z Garcia. Alrighty, well, welcome mm. to. I... Keep it up. <laughs> Keep it up. <laughs> welcome to the second final part of second our. Second final! Penultimate! Oh, I like that yeah. word! There penultimate. You go. <laughs> we broke Tom. <laughs> I forgot what we're talking about. Yeah, we're right. talking about top 100 games of all time. Today we're doing 20 through 11. That's Welcome, right. everybody. Yes. Right. My name is Tom Vassell. <laughs> I'm my, <laughs> oh. my Delicio. I like that. That's good. See, but when I put that, it changed the message. No, it didn't, Tom. Uh-huh. You don't have that kind of power. <laughs> Shake it. We haven't unlocked that stretch there you go. goal it's yet. Be like an extra sketch. <laughs> but if we do unlock the next stretch goal in our ongoing Kickstarter, uh, DiceTowerKickstarter.com, we will buy Tom an etch a sketch. That's right. We might be. Man, I'm really one. bad at etch a sketch. I used to try to write words on them, and I even sit better. there, and my brother would shake it. It was really frustrating. It sounds like you were bad at it. He was bad at it. Also, <laughs> both. All right. <laughs> all righty. Well, all right. So this is the cool. You know, I mean, these are the top percentage of games in the collection. If out of 8,000 games I play, this is in the top. Who knows? It's a very small number. You're a math teacher. Figure it out. <laughs> well, I was going to start doing it in my head. Then I needed to be like, shut up, nerd. Mm. And then we would just No, start. okay. You cannot win with me. That's the first mistake. <laughs> if you do the math, I'll be like, shut up, nerd. If you don't do it, I'm going to rag on you for not doing it. <laughs> it's in the top one-fourth percent. Shut up, oh. nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're getting into pretty good games now. Let's I get actually like finally, games. finally yeah. some games. Yeah, I keep saying it, and the number keeps sliding. Pretty much thirty through <laughs> infinity are garbage right, games. Right, I'm not playing these games again. <laughs> Do not approach me to play these games with mm-hmm. you. Top twenty, maybe I'll consider it. Yeah, let's start. Here we go. <laughs> Tom, Tom picked up the wrong thing. He's like, like my top, my twenty is shut up, shut up, Z. <laughs> a party game. Actually, my number twenty is one of the two games left in my top twenty from the original two thousand five. Wow. There's like five of those, right? You said no, there was five in the top forty. Oh, There's right. only two now in the top twenty. This is oh. one of them. I bet I'm it, really good at this game. You are. So is bad it, at this game. Is it, is it the one we're thinking of? I don't know anyone worse at this game, actually. Wow. Oh, that's that's All right. It was number 11 when I started. Number 20 now. It's pretty close. And that's Time's Up. Mm. And when I say Time's Up, I used to be like, a title recall. But I've come around. I think yeah. I like them both. Mm. The thing about the, the people one is... You can have some really funny things happen in that sure. because people don't know those. Right, right, right. right. What, so, when you say people... Do you mean anyone in particular, or I don't know? No, I mean when you're using people's names as right. opposed to. So you mean like some people might not know who people are? <laughs> Is I, I anyone think you guys, that you guys you're thinking of? This. That's been almost a year ago. Like that's literally a year ago from today. We played that. Is he still bad at it? Well, we'll find out. We're gonna Dude, do a repeat. Let's to use these cards like the, right here. Do you know Billy Idol? Yes, he has uh, hell. Well, that's true. Uh, that's a good point. He has what? what? What about the Kool-Aid? He has hell. <laughs> Kool-Aid man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anakin Skywalker should have got the higher ground. All right, he knows. Mango. You know, Those are the cards Bart. we made up. Who's Vincent Van Gogh? I know. Van Gogh. Wait, who's Bobby Vincent Flay Van Gogh? Is on there. Who has my Bobby ear. Flay on a card other than... I'm pretty sure it was the, the Sam Healy thing. He's missing an ear, right? Yeah. I want you yeah. to bend my ear about Vincent Van Gogh. Go ahead. Dude. Stop with the obvious jokes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, Time's Up is the highest party game on my list. It is still tremendously fun every time I play it. I mean, it's, yeah. this game just goes well. And the biggest thing for me to change in the past couple of years has been the team versus team aspect. Yeah. I was always opposed to doing that. I've come around on it now. So. Yeah, the last time I played it was a two big teams against each other. It was a lot of fun. It really was. 
I was just say it was our marathon, but you skipped our marathon. No, no, it was it was during the marathon. I was in the UK. <laughs> yeah. It was a good game, Mike. <laughs> all right, my number twenty. I have to concede all to Mr. Tom Vassell. I was not familiar with this. It's a new game, and I and I concede that this might be why it's very high because it's I'm very enjoying this so far. exciting to me. I, I, I've taught this game to a number of people. Um, it's Master of Respect. So I bow and give respect to wow. you. Wow! Uh, that didn't even make my top 100. Nice. Man, this game. But it's pretty cool. 20. Oh, yeah, yeah. This, this game is so good. Have you played it? Yeah. Then why isn't it on your list? What's the matter with you? Maybe it is. He's a troller. Oh, uh, okay. This it's game not, is really guys, good. It's fine. Yeah, I no, like that. No, I love it. It's, it's nice. It's, like, you went from like. Bam to twenty. Well, and, that, and that's why I'm saying I am conceding that this may drop over time. But right now, and as a matter of fact, if there's one thing I will say is that I'm afraid that unless there's more content for it, that it will start dropping down sure. my list. Uh, but man, do I like it now! And I've taught it to a bunch of people, and they've all really liked it. I've come to find that over my gaming uh, life, I really like simultaneous play that and you this, can remember yeah from what i can remember um and this is so quick you know i i really like that you're kind of doing your planning for the round mm -hmm. behind your little screen you lift up your screen and you can see what the, the first thing is but you're simultaneously flipping over these tiles um it's so good it just really is quick i like the idea of once per round you're sending one of your your uh, fighters into the arena to get some bonus points but you don't necessarily want to send your best one because you don't have access to them the next round right it's just a, a very simple game but it's gone over well with a whole bunch of different types of groups and um, as soon as you started talking about it i was like man that sounds good it sounds really good, and then I played it, and it exceeded my expectations. So, uh, it, unfortunately, it's not very easy to get a hold of. I imported it from uh, Amazon Japan, um, so we, you can get I it. I know that there's talks I would never put work. games on my list that are out of print. <laughs> I'm just saying. Clearly, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I got it. Learn for, from the master. Yeah, it was a reasonable price from Amazon uh, Japan, because uh, the, they will deliver certain games to the, U, the U.S. This is one of them. Um, it's just really good. I like the artwork. I actually thought it was like a... Samurai Jack. I thought it was yeah. some sort of spinoff of that yeah. <coughs> cartoon. It, like it does. But Hobby Japan's pretty high on my list of the company that makes somewhat quirky but cool games. Yeah. That's yeah. them for me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice. My number 20. That, I don't think that he meant nice. <laughs> no, that was a garbage. My finish. That's a transition. <laughs> nice. It's, it's my turn. Mm -hmm. Okay. My number 20 is the game that started off Plaid Hat Games. It's a tactical two player game, and that is Summoner Wars. Mm -hmm. I love Summoner Wars. I it's love playing low, it. There's Roy. so mm. many different factions in Summoner Wars. And it's so fun to like play off all these different factions head to head. The way that you're like building walls and putting out characters, and it's all about defeating the like enemy summoner. I just love the variety in this game and like it takes this like sort of like moving around a board tactical game, but like does it with these cards and like the whole magic building thing where you're trying to build up your magic to be able to cast out your units. Do you save up a bunch to be able to get your heroes out? Do you spam the board with a ton of little like common guys? It's definitely a blast to play. And I guess this game is done at this point, but there's tons of content out there for it. It was done like three years ago. I know, I know, I know. But I still play it and it's still a ton That's of That's fine. And yeah, just because the game is quote unquote done, I, I'm... I didn't think it needed more factions and more, you know what I mean? It was, there's a lot out there for it. Yeah. I was done when they started combining sets or yeah. whatever. That's only the very final yeah. box. You can get, you don't have to, you can ignore that it ever happened. I, I, I stopped after this, I guess, right? This is a pretty solid set, though. This is a great mm. starting point. Oh, for, for sure. sure. Mm. And I, I really enjoy just keeping the decks as they are and playing them head-to-head. -head. Like, yeah. the way that they come out, it's very balanced that way. Yeah. And, I mean, if you want to, you can get, like, little packs and stuff, but at this point, they might be harder to find. But you can just, like, throw down two decks, and they're, they did a really good job balancing these decks, so you, if you play your strategy right, you're, you could probably make any deck win. But I do know? like that if you play with uh, customization, mm -hmm. You pick a summoner, you take the cards that come with that summoner. It's really simple. You take three champions yeah. and 18 other cards. Boom, boom, done. Right. It doesn't really matter. It's not. It's really easy to build a deck. I don't have to sit there and go, this guy's 21 points and that one's 17. I'm looking for a six-point character. Yeah. It's just take three champions, 18 commons. Yeah. Yep. And that's why Summoner Wars is my number 20. 
My number 20 is a game called Jamaica. Oh, oh, nice. Jamaica is a racing game in which you are, of course, racing around the island of Jamaica, trying to get back as soon as possible. But you're also collecting money along the way because those will be victory points as well. Uh, this has an expansion which I very much enjoy. Most people, most people do not seem to uh, put a lot, a lot of stock in that expansion, but I think it's a great expansion. Very easy to teach and incorporate into the main game. This is a beautiful game. One of the first games that put just that the, the level of attention and detail and uh, just lush artwork was front and center when this came out. And you could tell because everybody talked about it. Much like when Abyss came out and yeah. it really stood out sure. for the artwork, this was one of those games. When this came out, everybody was talking about the artwork, not about the game. But it's a great game as well, one that fits a lot of different playing groups. Some confrontation, you know, some chucking of dice and backstabbery and, you know, dirty tricks, stuff like that. But it's a racing game yeah. at heart. And one that is very captivating and simple to play. I like that combination of something being engaging and captivating, but I can also get into it and just have a great time with it. So Jamaica is still one I love. It's been on this list, I'm sure, a bunch of times. My number 20. I played this less than two months ago with five people, and I was... Game still going on. I was like, man, this is still <laughs> a, still a good game. I mean, yeah, right? it, just, it does what it wants to do, and it does it really well. This one's falling for me a bit. I don't dislike it. I still like it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I, I feel like I've seen what it has to offer. It's also, you haven't played it in a while, maybe. I, yeah. I think games that are this clean and simple and like take one idea and do that one idea well, yeah. they're easy to forget. But when you they come back to the table, you play it and go, oh, yeah, this is good. You know what, also, the last time I played it was with you. Oh, no, 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 but it was with the expansion, and I did not care for that expansion. All right. Have so, you played the expansion, Mike? I have not. I certainly would, though. I'd give it a shot. No. Don't do it. It's garbage. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> All right, the people's number 20 has been on the list since the beginning for them, hmm. which has been nine years. Uh, it was number 11 when it showed up, So, and last year it was 17. Really? So it's just dropped a bit. It is one of the three... Gateway Games of Wonder. Mm. Ticket to... Nope. Kark. <laughs> Ticket to Kark. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Carcassonne. Just straight ah, up Carcassonne. Okay. Yeah. Nice. That's what I just mm -hmm. said. You need this is what, to get in. Carcassonne is definitely moving into that territory nowadays where people go, oh, yeah, 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 I played Carcassonne. <laughs> yeah, back in the day, you know. Oh, it jumped the shark, blah, 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 for that expansion I never actually bought, but I'm just assuming it was bad. Right. Um, Which is great. Catapult Everybody should up. own the Catapult. Oh, I like the Catapult. <laughs> the Catapult is the best expansion to Carcassonne. And I think it really made the game. <laughs> not gonna, the I dragon. might not lie publicly <laughs> like this, but... Oh, I'll do it all the time. Mm -hmm. Carcassonne is one of those games that I think... When I teach these gateway games to people, mm -hmm. there are some gate. You know, when you teach Katana people, yeah. the trading aspect, they're like, wow, right. that's amazing. Yeah. For Carcassonne, when you teach it to people, the fact that you build this puzzle... Right, right. People like crossword puzzles. I'm not crossword puzzles, uh... Jigsaw puzzles. Yeah. There's a reason there's a gazillion of those sold. Yeah. There's that satisfaction of putting a piece down, which, by the way, I just did to my daughter again. Hmm. <laughs> you stole a piece again? She came and said I, uh, the puzzle was finished, but she was just missing one piece. And I was like, what? But then she tried to, there was a wrestling match to see <laughs> who put the piece in. It wasn't as easy. This is something Tom likes to do whenever family members of his are putting together a, a puzzle, a mm -hmm. jigsaw puzzle. He will steal a single piece, drive them insane, I can only assume, <laughs> and then be the one to finish it himself. Mm. And then when and people then come he around. finished the puzzle. If this tells you anything about this man's <laughs> work <laughs> ethic, oh. and where the ideas <laughs> at the Dice Tower come from. <laughs> Thank you, Z. Pulling back the curtain. Carcassonne. Let's move on. My number 19 has been on my list for three years. It was 18 last year, so. Consistent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this was already on someone else's list and the People's Choice list. It's the come on game that's, I think, highest on my list at this point. Blood Rage? No, I already said Blood Rage. It's oh, yeah. Rising Sun. Oh, you like really? Rising Sun more wow. than the Rage of Blood? <laughs> than the Rage of he Blood. He just likes being wrong. Mm -hmm. 
How's that possible? That I'm wrong? I think that one's pretty what about, obvious. <laughs> <laughs> what about Arcadia Quest? I'm looking where Bud Rage is no, on my list I now. Did that one. Anyway, it was higher on my list. Anyway, I like Rising. This is your highest come on game. Hmm. Yeah, I think I like it better. I've already done uh, Arcadia Quest. Now I'm checking because I'm wondering if I have a higher one. Well, it's the highest one. Well, no, it's the highest published. Yeah, right. Okay. Yes, of course. Okay. Anyhow, um, I love Rising Sun. I like the giant monsters. Yeah. I like that you can use those to fight. I like that they're defeatable. Mm -hmm. But honestly, what makes me... I like the combat system. Yeah, Roy combat said it. Good. Yeah. Uh, I know it's really weird because that's like your least favorite part mm -hmm. of the game. It is my least favorite part of the game. Yeah, I still like this game a lot, but it is my least favorite part. I like that combat system, and there's a lot of similarities to Project uh, uh, um, uh, Ignacy's game. Uh, my brain went blank, too. Cry, Cry Havoc. Cry Havoc. Yes. Yes. Also has that funky combat system. And yes. I like these combat mm -hmm. systems where sometimes fighting's not the best way. Right. Sometimes it's, in this case... You know, surrendering. <laughs> by yeah, you want to find ways yourself. around that fight. Yeah, I think it's this interesting. This clever because you have the you have the order of the fights right. is announced. You know which fights are coming up and which ones you're a part of. You can take a dive on early fights to do better in late ones because yeah. you make money from that. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's definitely a thinking fighting system. Right. I like it. I don't but feel if like you it's miscalculate by one coin, sometimes on those fighting bids. It yeah. really stings, and yeah. there's no good, there's no real good way to, to just, know, oh, I made a mistake, it's clear, I can pinpoint where I made a mistake. Oh, I just, just do my mistakes wrong. the whole game. I really yeah. enjoy that it like, lets you bluff a little bit. You yeah. can be like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, I'm totally going to like do this thing, or I'm going to totally wreck my own deeds and get the points off it, and then yeah. you just do something different. You that, know? That's why the metal coins are every time turn out to you lying you to your opponents? You playing with it's, those metal coins. It's interesting to try to do those mind games. It's, it's fun. That's why I like the combat. Yeah, yeah you got to yeah. make people think you're putting a lot of money in by just fiddling around with those metal coins. I, I've done that before. I'd be oh, like, absolutely. how many coins do you have? What's the number? What is it? And you act like you're super invested in the combat. Right. All I like, know is oh, the next no. time I play a game with Roy, I'm just assuming he's lying. <laughs> it could be a straight-up cooperative game. Mm -hmm. Sure. He's the traitor. And I will assume he's lying. That's Even a if good there is no traitor. call. He probably Whatever. is. If you play more games with Roy, I think I'm going to assume Roy's the liar. Mostly because he's just very... Really? Roy is the most honest liar I know. He just straight up lies. He's like, <laughs> I am lying. Mm -hmm. And I was just saying, I'm, I'm deceitful about my lies. How dare you? I take offense to that. I, I can live with it. He's what, lying right now. What's your number 19? I, <laughs> my number 19 is a cooperative game. Um, you're a huge fan of the system that this game employs. It's not a pandemic game, but it okay, is. Okay, that's the only thing I can think of. But it is a pandemic game. To me, this is the best of what I would call the pandemic family. Is this a forbidden game? It is not a forbidden game. This is Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds? Yeah. Wow. Are you kidding me? I, You're the other one who's yeah, played this. Yes. <laughs> exactly right. This game dropped. Hang, I'm getting into my airplane to come fight you. Yeah. I'll be there in 20 minutes. Because, look, this game is pandemic with movement with different types of movement like you move around the board in pandemic but this one is much more about the logistical utilization of these vehicles and mm -hmm. getting around the board and and that's just to me a, a nice little puzzle on top of that card puzzle sure that all okay. of the all of the leacock uh cooperative games employ the theme is fine but that's not even really what draws me to this i appreciate the theme i grew up watching some of these <laughs> But uh, I'll be there in five more minutes. Okay. What a dork. But this this game, just for some reason, took something I was expecting that I knew what I was going to be getting, and it just turned it upside down for right. me. Right, right. Um, being able to utilize the right characters with the right vehicles at the right time, knowing which schemes to go after. I just, for some reason, to me, this is the height of the Matt Leacock cooperative designs. And I feel like I'm the only one on the planet that feels that way, but that's okay. Wait, you think it's his best game? I think this is his best game that uses that cooperative mechanic, yes. So I like it his better best than, game, then. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess that's it. Yeah, for me, yes. This is yes. too random compared to the other ones. Have you played really? this game? Yes! Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> how, how is it more random than, than Pandemic or any of his other games? Ah, because No, because Pandemic, you cycle through those cities. Right. And they go back on top. You know what cities it possibly can go through again. You cycle through them multiple times. You can kind of sit there and go, there's a good chance that Tokyo is going to come up this turn. Sure. Here, I don't know that 
something's gonna show up over here, and the pink lady's got to run over there, and her Cadillac. How dare you? The pink lady. Yeah. The bar, the pink Barbie car has to get <laughs> over there. Oh no, Fab One! Mm. How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying it's more random. You it know is. What? It may be more random, and, and I guess that doesn't bother me because it's it's a game about dealing with stuff that pops up. Yeah, You're it's about like putting out fires. That's what it is. Yeah, and being in the right place at the right time. Right. I agree. I think it's a great, great game. Yeah. Super underrated. Very underrated. That's so underrated. Show up on his list. It's my number watch. 19. I don't know. I don't want to say yay or nay because I really don't remember. <laughs> it hasn't been on my list yet. I don't, I don't remember know. you talking also, about it. Okay. Can I skip you? No. Nah. Right. Uh, my number 19 nice. is also <laughs> a come on game. Mm. Is it Blood Rage? But there are zero miniatures in this come on game. Then I can't oh, even talk to you. F knows. What? There no? okay. are marbles in this game. Oh. My number 19 is Gizmos. Uh, potion Explosion. <laughs> no. It's similar to Potion Explosion, but this is more engine buddy. Gizmos is not similar to Potion Explosion. It they is. They marbles, both have marbles. And they have a little thing. They have both a thing you pull marbles boxes. from. I love when people use that as a, well, they both, yeah, there's lots of games that both have cards. <laughs> come on. And they're all the same Wait, game. Wait, they do both have cards, too. I mean, come on now. Gizmos is a game on, where games. you're trying to collect different energy marble things and then create a contraption to basically get victory points. Um, you're trying to utilize all the marbles you get and basically try to build up combos. It's just really fun to be able to set all the stuff out and like try to like work towards a certain color or something like that. It's like, okay, well, when I take a yellow, I get a random one from the top, but then when I get a random from the top, I get to take this, and when I do this, I get to do this, and I build this, and I get three points, but when That's I build exactly this... exactly how I felt yeah. playing it, too. And I love that about this game. I love engine building, and this is like super simple engine building, but it's like definitely in a very like cute package with all the like bright colors and stuff like that, and it's very... Easy to play, but it's like an interesting like thing of like trying to build everything all together. I really enjoy Gizmos, and that's why it's my number nineteen. I feel like me and Roy have a lot of crossover on the engine building side of yeah. things. We mm -hmm. tend to like the same thing there. I really enjoy engine building. Gizmos? Yeah, I like this one. Like the first two thirds of the game a lot. The last like third. The is a lot of what you just said. That's my favorite part. I love combos in games. I mean, that's yeah, why I like... Yeah, but it's like really simple, obvious, basic combos that just never stop. It's like, take a purple, so I take a black one. When I spend a black one, I take a yellow. When I get a yellow, I spend a blue one. And then I slap myself, and then I fall asleep. And then when you wake up, you take a green one. It's like, please. How I does love it. slapping yourself make you go to sleep? How do you go to sleep? you got to slap yourself pretty hard, but it could, it could work. <laughs> At night, like, I'm counting sheep. What? <laughs> But if you haven't tried out Gizmos, it's definitely a fun engine building game. And it's I would recommend it. I would recommend it. It's a very well I like it a lot, game. too. Good choice. Yeah. Okay, dokes. Uh, where am I at? 19. 19. No, guys. 29? 19? Am I really lost? Yes. There it is. <laughs> You're not on 29, no. <laughs> All right, my 19. <laughs> I don't know why I went default to 29. My 19 is a Euro game I really enjoy called Santa Maria. Oh. Santa Maria. Mm -mm. This one is a uh, kind of a worker placement game with dice, maybe. A activation game. I don't know if I would call it a worker placement game, but it's got a bunch of moving parts. It's got a couple of really engaging mechanical aspects to it which i think are what put it on the list for me because the rest of it in description anyway do sound like yes yeah, same old euro game type stuff you're collecting resources you're spending those resources to get x y or z and trying to get a bunch of victory points the game the mechanisms what you're actually doing i find very engaging uh it's um it's got a great build, you know, one dice placement mm -hmm. in the first round looks nothing like placing a dice in the fourth round. You know, you're activating so many more things, combining ideas, uh, pushing yourself down one path or another, trying to stay ahead of the competition, you know, giving, uh, giving way in one aspect so that you can uh, make progress in another. I like all those things going on, and I just... I like how the package comes together to provide a game that I find I'm always engaged. No matter what phase we're in, no matter whether I'm just collecting resources or spending them or drafting a die or building my board, I'm always engaged. I think it's 
again, I complain about this in longer games a lot, and it's like I feel like I'm doing the same thing from moment to moment to moment to moment. I think Santa Maria really avoids that. It's not a particularly long game anyway, right. but I think it really avoids settling into feeling like you're repeating yourself. Because I'm always doing a little something different. I really enjoy this game. Such a good, solid, engaging game. So Santa Maria, 19 for me. I expect this will stick around in my collection for a long time. I can see lots of other Euro games falling by the yeah. wayside while this sticks around. This has the thing I like the most in Euros, which is that ratio of time to play it versus meaningful decisions. Yeah. It's really yeah. good. It's moved up. Sense. It was 41 for you last time. Hmm. I don't believe it. <laughs> okay. People's Choice 19 was on the list since the beginning also, and it was number one when it showed up. Wow. So it's moved like this. 1, 1, 3, 4, 9, 8, 13, 13, and this year 19. Hmm. The most played game in 2011, for sure, and 2010, 20, and 29, 11. and 29, 2009, I think. It, it Had we done the People's Choice list, it would have been number one then, too, also. Wait, 2009... Dominion? Dominion is correct. Ah, okay. Good with the dates. Yeah, Dominion. And you know what? I'm still impressed that it's 19 on this I'm list shocked. because this is one of those games that, again, I don't know what it is about the board game community, but when a game's been out for a while and it's been super popular, it's kind of cool to go, well, you know. Well, you that know, used to be Tom. good. Mm -hmm. Dominion used to be good. Yeah. The week it came out. <laughs> After that, it was old and busted. <laughs> Dominion, now I will say, I don't know how often I see this one getting played these days, sure. but they still I would come hide. out with an if expansion. If I still wanted to play this, I would hide. That's mm. true. Hide my shame. I love Dominion. I would gladly play it. I think it's a fantastic game, and I'm glad to see this one still high on the list. It may eventually fall off, and it's, but it's one of the few games that legitimately started its own genre. Absolutely, yeah, it did. For sure. yeah, and it's got some did. serious staying power. It does. Well, they just announced another expansion. What? <laughs> yeah. Kill me. It's clearly all because of the well, art. Well, sir. Because the art is just so stunning in all of these. Since you asked. Come on. That's not okay to go hey, after the art. but did you know that the very first one, Ryan Lockett did some of the cards for did it. Did he really? Yep. Yeah. Some fish people. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember, I remember that's seeing crazy. this. Like, I, I saw it at, at Target, and, like, they actually, somebody had returned it from the internet, and I'm like, this, what is this thing? I was like, I had heard it talked about on the Dice Tower before, but I'm just like, it just didn't look like something I would like. And we actually, I bought it, and we brought it home, and I played it with my friends, and, like, we didn't stop playing it. Mm. Like, just this whole deck building thing of, like, Ever. like I said, <laughs> building still combos and it. stuff yeah. is so much fun. And yeah. the fact that, like, Tons and tons of other deck builders are out there, but the fact that this is still all the way up at 19, I think, is huge. This That's hasn't shown nuts. up on your list yet? No. I did not actually make my list. I feel like it would be probably <laughs> further in there. My 18! <laughs> it's like, I, there are, oh, I enjoy you, deck builders, but I have said, other deck builders. this did not make my list. Yeah, you, this did not make my list. Definitely, I actually didn't make my list. <laughs> that is definitely what you said. <laughs> <laughs> I've, been making, I've been making this Are you rolling thing. dice back there? What's going on? Look, He's like, I'm all right, say, my 18 is going to be... just got a blank uh, piece of paper here. I oh, look, Dominion. Anything, it didn't make my list. Basically, I just took the Ameritrash <laughs> list on Board Game Geek, and I'm just reading there them There you all. go. That's what it that is. That works, you know? dude. Mm -hmm. All righty. So, People's Choice number 19, Dominion. All right, my number 18 has been on the list for four years. And in fact, two years ago, it was 18 also. Last year was 14, this year 18. Same old, same old. Uh, this is the most popular game that I still see being played consistently. And this one also has a gazillion expansions. Not that many, but I just put them all in a separate box because I couldn't fit them all in the original box anymore. And that is Terraforming Mars. Whoa. Really like Terraforming mm -hmm. Mars. Mm -hmm. Talk about engine building. That's what this game is. And what's cool about Terraforming Mars is every single game, my engine building is different. Because yeah. I'm going to get the cards in a very different order. Now, yes, the game could have been better produced. Yes, it could have had better artwork. Uh, yes, th there's some great expansions and there's some decent expansions. But overall, the base game itself alone, would it would still be on my list. Mm -hmm. that was without any of those expansions. To you. What would the base yeah. game be? Somewhere? Now, Prelude is fantastic. Yeah. I'll never play without Prelude. Ever. Ever. <laughs> um, but... I don't need the other expansions at all. Yeah. I can play with them without them. doesn't matter to me. I do like playing with all my bling, though. I have more blinged-out components for Terraforming Mars than any other four games. 
Probably which I don't know if it's more. a testimony <laughs> to how bad yeah. the original game was. It needs it more than any other one. Yeah. You've gotten like blinged out components for this and then gotten other blinged out components to replace the blinged out components. Yes, I did. <laughs> that, is, that is correct. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sorry. So Terraforming Mars is just a fantastic game. I love it. All right. My number 18, I'm ready, I'm ready for the backlash uh, from the quote-unquote serious hardcore gamers. This is a light game, a very light game, but... Candyland. You know, no, not quite. <laughs> you know, oftentimes people will say, or you'll see people online ask, you know, I've learned Catan, this has got me into the hobby, where's a, where's a good next step? And there's always, you know, different... To me, this is a perfect... Seafarers. No, no. To me, this is a perfect next step from Catan. If you like Catan and you want some of that similar feel, but you want something a little bit more updated and modern, Ad Astra, Rise of Tribes, Rise of Tribes. That's where I'm you go. I'm not going to give you garbage in that. I mean, you're wrong. But I think that this game is. I haven't played. Really? Okay. Yeah. It's it's very it's very simple, and I think at first blush, oh. it might come across as being overly simple. All right. Um, I don't think it's that simple. It's it's. The, well, but see, that's what I like. I, the, the main mechanic is basically it's dice-driven. You're rolling two dice for four actions. Yeah, and I hate that mechanism. Really, I love that mechanism. It's this idea of you've got a standard action that you can take okay. depending on what's on those dice, and there's a weaker version of the action and a stronger version of the action. And if you choose this action, you roll the dice, and uh, you you figure out whether you're getting the regular, the weak, or the, or the strong. Um, okay. I, it's, it, I know I'm not doing a, I'm not doing a terrific yeah, job. I just of don't get it. Basically, I got I four got main it. Don't worry about Okay, it. Yeah. Uh -huh. but basically, it's it's got that Catan feel of you're building up this map or you're working on this map. You're gaining resources. You're trying to turn those resources into points. Okay. Um, there, there's a bit more of a of a random element with events that come up that that could potentially trigger if you roll doubles. You get uh, an event that comes up. This Wait, game, there's a roll doubles rule in this well, game? Well, it's only in that sense of making it a stronger or a weaker. It, it's, it's not quite as bad as it sounds, trust me. It, it, it's, I feel like I'm doing a horrible job of that. Rise of Parcheesi. It's a good game. It's a, re, it's a very good <laughs> game. It's my number 18. This is a game that I feel like people are maybe a little bit hesitant to try because it looks uh, maybe too simplistic. Yeah, but the I cover th looks cool. I like yeah. that cover a lot. Oh, the art in the game is very the good. The art is really yeah. good, and there is, a, there is a, an advanced version of the game that I would recommend if you have played games, hobby games a bit, you probably would want to just start with the advanced. But if you're bringing new people into the hobby that maybe have only played Carcassonne or Catan, this is a really good one to get them into some of the more modern mechanics and uh, move them further along. I did see a. I did see this somewhere, like a Target or Walmart. It's in Walmart. Or Walmart. Maybe that's it's at Walmart. Someone said that. Yeah. Since you said Walmart, someone said they saw that Walmart. They just assumed it was garbage because yeah, of that. Right, and I get oh, that, okay. but it's, it's not garbage too. Yeah. It nah. Really they have a few. They have a few good games. It's like games. panning for gold. No, they have well, like Takenoko, for example. Yeah, I yeah. get Walmart. it. I'm saying I can go into Walmart and hit the shelf with a forklift, and all the games, but a few could fall off, and I'd be like, that's probably all the good ones that were there. Mm. That's well, a really bad analogy. Hang I am so confused. The ones that stayed on the shelf are good. The ones that fell are good. Why are you in Walmart driving a Ford list? Sorry. Yeah, something got terribly wrong here. I was, the scenario uh, is not what good. I meant was That's you could throw saying. a rock and not hit a good game in Walmart. How's that? Yeah, I'm not going course. to Walmart. With it's you a very small section. You shouldn't do that. You're going to yeah. hit somebody and get sued. Likely. Not Walmart. I'm pretty sure after this episode, you're no longer going to be allowed in Walmart. That's right. I'm pretty <laughs> sure you're going to see a picture of a <laughs> wild-eyed <laughs> man with a hat and a <laughs> rock at Walmart. Like, you know, Walmart like, like, <laughs> we saw your YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Rise of Tribes. It's a good, good entry-level game. It's All right. time for epic games. Epic games. Are they sure. tiny epic? No. There's no such thing. Twilight Imperium 5th <laughs> Edition. No, no, no. My number 18 is Star Wars in a Box, Star Wars Rebellion. I thought yeah, for no. sure you already put this on your list. No, it's 18. It's on there twice. It might have been on the People's it Choice. It must have been on the People's Choice yeah, when you were we in charge. About it. But I really enjoy Star Wars Rebellion. This feels so much like Star Wars, probably more like Star Wars than some of the Star Wars movies feel like Star Wars. Whoa. 
but it allows you to play through the game That's with these characters Star that you really enjoy. <laughs> and like, it's very, I love how it's so asymmetrical, the different sides. The Empire is like stretching out, trying to find the Rebel base. The Rebels are trying to complete these like little rogue missions to try to like mess up the Empire, but at the same time, keep their base hidden. And it just, it's just a very interesting dynamic when it's really actually like this weird like worker placement with the different heroes and they have different stats on them to try to complete the different missions, good and bad. And you can do all sorts of different things like freeze people in carbonite or take people captive or go and try to blow up the Death Star. It just feels like Star Wars. And it's a quite a long game, but I feel like it's worth the time to play and I really enjoy it. I do like that you've you had Luke Skywalker said, in quite a long game. <laughs> well, I mean, if if 30 minutes is a long game, then there's that. I like the it's accurate scale minutes. of the miniature. Well, I mean, this is like good. four hours, so <laughs> That's I mean, too long. <laughs> The yeah. Death Star is quite small. I was going to say, the, the scale of the miniatures is a little bit alarming to me, yes. Those are giant troopers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's... it's Whatever. Like, I mean, it's like really Come on. size stuff. This has been done really ever. Enjoyable. Those guys and axes and allies can never get inside those tanks. This is true. They fixed that in the later printings, They though. did not. <laughs> not even... I, th I think even axes and allies... Miniatures, they weren't correct scale at that point, I think. I do like the idea of this game yeah, from I everything I've ever heard described. Yeah. I haven't played it. But last time I saw it being played was at one of the gaming nights, and they were there for a long, long, long time. I That's don't feel like this is the, the kind of game. <laughs> far. This is far, not the kind of game that I want to play at like a game twice. group or another thing. This is the kind of game where I want to invite one person over. We're going to play a two player game, but we're going to play an epic two player game. Yeah. And we're going to sit there and like. Play this awesome Star Wars universe game that's going to give you that Star, Star Wars, Wars in a feel. box. Yeah, exactly. So, there you go. I do, need, I do need to try Rebellion. it. I do need to try it. What do you got? Star Wars in a box for me, too, please. Star Wars Carcassonne? But no theme. Mm. Star whatsoever. Wars Splendor. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's an abstract game called Yinch. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. Your so villains are the worst! Yeah. Uh, this game is... When you have the Rebels, when yeah. you think have of, the Empire... When you think of black and white plastic... <laughs> <laughs> something you think of often. This game is black and white plastic in a box. Yeah. I yeah. would say it's more about black and white plastic <laughs> than the than movies. The movies. <laughs> <laughs> so, or if you want to hit him, it's very <laughs> legit. HR won't notice. <laughs> uh, this is a, a five in a row style abstract game. You're trying to get five of your pieces in a row. You're playing uh, the dark or the light pieces. Once you do so, you remove those pieces from the board. You do this three times in the whole game. You win. Very simple concept. You pretty much know how to play now. I really like the, the tactics involved in this abstract game. It's a quick one. It's about, I don't know. 30 minutes, 25 minutes. I like that the central mechanism in it, or one of the main uh, cruxes in the whole thing, is that the closer you get to victory, the weaker your board position is. Every time you remove five of your pieces from the board, obviously you're removing them, so that's making you weaker. But you're also removing one of your main discs that are, are how you drop new pieces on the board. You have a few of them. Every time you score one point towards the three you need for victory, one of those discs comes off the board. And so your board position is weaker. Love that idea. And they even find a little sort of cutesy way to say, well, you remove one because you set it on, your, on the board and it's, yeah, that's how you mark a point. That's a cutesy way of saying you lose one, but it works. What do you mean that is how you mark a point? It's not a cutesy way. It's like... It's a me it's a mechanical necessity. The whole game is mechanical. <laughs> it's like, oh, remove, you know, he's not taking it off the board because you need to use it to mark a point. He's taking it off the board because he needs how to make you, you weaker. How else would you mark a point? You're holding it. Thanks, Captain. You know what? <laughs> Next time that gaming is happening, after you're done playing Rebellion with Roy, you and I are going to yin shit up. That's right. And I will cut you, sir. <laughs> I'm going to cut you open like a filthy pig. I apologize. I get passionate about yin shit. <laughs> so I I, that bad at yin shit, I'll <laughs> take you up on that. <laughs> anyway, I like this game a lot. You should give it a try if you enjoy a, a tremendous Who lack of theme. I think filthy pig. It's Connect anyway. 5, basically, right? This is what you got going it's on here? It's like Pente a little bit. Okay. Or, uh, yeah, Connect 5, sure. <laughs> 
All right, the people's choice number 18 was 19 last year. It's been on the list for eight of the last nine years. It started wow. at 14, was as high as four. And it mm. is the people's choice worker placement of choice, I think. Mm. Maybe. And that yeah. is Lords of Waterdeep. Ah, okay. This so one, good. this one, I want to say this is one of the biggest gateway games for sure. role players. Way sure. better than some other games that might have been mentioned in the list about gatewaying and all that. No, no, I'm saying for role players, yeah. this has gotten a lot of them into the hobby, I think, because they're like, ah, it's, it's a Dungeons and Dragons right. board game. And they play, like, what is this? I'm like, okay, now play Kalis. And then they go back to Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> but yeah, if you yeah, don't yeah. use Kalis as the mm -hmm. second game, yeah. Rise which is a fine game, I just... You just shouldn't give it to someone as their second game. Um, or their first, which seems to be a thing also. Yeah. Oh, you got this! It's not that hard! <laughs> anyway, Lords of Waterdeep, I see this one still being played. I think, mm -hmm. I think I saw it last Tuesday at the game meetup, too. That's wild. It is. That's Dungeons & Dragons. And it's yeah. also in a very popular... The Waterdeep's a very popular setting for D&D. &D, yeah. so. I'm actually a little surprised they only came out the one expansion. I, I, I expected there to be at least one or two more. Yeah, but that's not the game's fault. No, that's just no, Wizards of the Coast, though. Yeah. It's not magic, we won't support it. Yeah, That's, that's really where they're at. This could have had more. Could have more buildings. It could have, have been had a There hasn't been a sequel to this set in the magic world. Oh, that's an interesting one. One of them. Yeah. Honestly, they could just retheme it and put it in magic. They don't seem five. to really want to do that. I don't know what it is. I know. Well, they've done a couple of magic but games. Heroes but Heroes of Dominaria one was recent, and yeah. it was not. I liked it, but eh. then again, I don't know. It's just weird to me how I Wizards' mind is. I want to see Lords is. of Ravnica. Ooh. There you go. I'd be in. All right. Let's move. My number 17 is new to the list. It's one of the three games that's new. Um, and it's from here on up. This one I had just played last time we made the list, or I played it, no, I played it after we made the list. And I played it many, many, many times. I think it was already on the people's choice. I agree with them highly. And that is Vindication. Oh, oh you're a big fan. Man. I am a huge fan wow. of Vindication. Mm -hmm. I, you know, there's a lot of games I just was talking about this recently that come with all these modules, yeah. and blah, blah, blah. And this is one of them. I want to know the game's good without the modules. Sure. And it is. But then, man, mixing and matching all the different modules, I'm really on board with that. It is a sandbox game, and it is most definitely, I came into this game because I thought the theme was cool. Yeah. Right. The whole idea of you landing, and yes, I heard the name Vindication. You're a filthy rat. <laughs> Vindication is not the right word. It right. should be... Um, Redemption, maybe? Redemption, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... Not Vindication, but whatever. Vindication's a cool name. It is. It sounds better. And the theme of it, that you land and you're a filthy scum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you were, you were just yeah. waiting for that. So anything goes Ooh. now. <laughs> Man. Um, Can you murder people in this game? No, you don't. You mm. fight big monsters, but... Do you murder them? Kind of. Throw me a bone here, yes? <laughs> All right. Um, the... <laughs> The theme was what brought me in once I played it. I realized the theme was kind of window dressing to some degree. Ooh. It's there, but it's mostly mechanical, the game, and I love the mechanics. I like the sandbox. There's, yeah, I need the this theme. is the only Euro sandbox game I can really think of. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I mean, there's, Euro, there's sandbox games like Zaya sure, and sure. Western... Uh, Gr Western Agricola, West yeah. <laughs> Great Western, Western Trails of Legends. Uh, Western Legends. Yeah, yeah. You know, but they're they're very thematic games. This one is not that way, and I still really like this mm. one. Mm. I like the, I mean, the expansion came, I was like, cool, new stuff. But I hadn't gotten tired of the old stuff yet. Yeah. So, Vindication, great game. All right, well, my number 17 is an example, I think, of where a truly good, unique theme can take a really good game and make it a great game. This is Well, perhaps, but that's not what I'm... That's not my number wow, 17. That was a no. <laughs> this is a Vladimir Suchi game. Ooh, you're already in. There's nothing you can say here that's a wrong answer. This as long is, as you don't say Pulsar. No, no, no. Good. I, I that said, would be the wrong answer. I said answer. theme. <laughs> oh, he did I say said, theme. I said yeah. theme, yeah. <laughs> this is Last Will. Um, I absolutely mm. adore this because, look, at its heart, this is a pretty standard worker placement card 
play tableau building game with the twist of instead of trying to gain points or gain money you're trying to spend money. It's that Brewster's Millions idea of you've, you've been given this money and you're being told you have to spend it in the most ridiculous and lavish and irresponsible way possible. And this game allows you to revel in that notion. Right. Um, you're taking your dog with you to have dinner on a yacht. Just ridiculous <laughs> stuff like that. Take your horse to the theater. Take you know your there's horse someone the out theater. there right now who's like, well, how That's dare you? That's yeah. not ridiculous. Yeah. No, no. But, but That's it's, just Wednesday. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fantastic example of, you know, Euro games especially don't do a good job of storytelling. And a lot of times <gasps> board games, they really don't. A lot of times board games before. try to be the storytelling vehicles and it's pretty turgid and it doesn't really come across. This game really, just by its nature, tells a story. Even if you're not trying to, just by actually saying what these cards are, just saying what you're doing is telling a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my question um, is, why did you pick this over Prodigal's Club? I enjoy Prodigal's Club. I feel like this is a pure example of what the game is. Prodigal's Club, I think, it's bogged down sometimes in its own. It's just too much. It really, it doesn't well, if need you all. Combine that. the two. No, just Prodigal's Club because you've got like three modules just in the Prodigal's Club. I like the the methodology of picking the actions, and this one, the hat thing, didn't work as well for me. Okay, I can see that. In Prodigal's Club, and this one, you're trying to lose all your money. Yes. In Prodigal's Club, you're trying to lose all your money. And all your friends. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you are also trying to be, yeah, to, to be and disrespectful. And also alienate everybody, like, politically. Like, sure. You, 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 like, pick some political party, like, wig, you know, wherever they are at this yeah. point in time, and you, like, make a speech for them. Then you make a speech for their side. Right. <laughs> yeah, don't get me wrong. Prodigal's Club is, is good. But to me, if I want this experience, this is the one I'm going to. It's quicker, first of all. It's, mm. it's a lot quicker to play than Prodigal's Club. Mm. And I think it's simpler. I, I just If you play one, though, you, you, you'll know how to play the other. That's almost. absolutely true. Yeah. So my number 17, Last Will. That's a good choice. That Thank you. That is a good choice. Wait, oh, I'm like sorry. It. Hang on. Ah. <laughs> Ooh, it even matched, too. Mm. All right, next. This is a sir. We're all good choice, oh. sir. All right, sir. my number 17 <laughs> was on the People's Choice list. It was on Tom's list. Vindication. It was on Mike's list. I get it, all right. It was right. on Z's list. Whoa! Five-way crossover. Have we had that much crossover? No, we're about this to. This is the best, best game social, of all time, then. <laughs> social deduction game. Oh, this is Deception, Deception Murder yeah. at Hong Kong. Wasn't on my list. What? Oh, this sure? is a travesty. <laughs> you should be ashamed. My top Look, I like the game, it just didn't make my top 100. Tom, what are you doing? All you right. ruined the perfect Can we moment. close the frame in so it's just the three of us? Right. So Tom's out of it? Let's retrofit your list. I'll leave. Hang on. Yes, please. Thank you. Awesome. Well, Deception Murder of Hong Kong is an awesome I still game. see your gut. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a fun game. It's such a great game. Uh... Do you have any social reduction <laughs> games on your list, then? Shut up, man! I'm Get out of here! So, I'm leaving for the best game, for sure. <laughs> it's great. We, Z called me fat, so I got it. <laughs> That's not what I said. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Why have you started recently started channeling John F. Kennedy? I'm oh, super confused by this. I, I like it though. He was his cadence kind of trips me on it. <laughs> anyway, uh, oh, the game's a ton of fun. It's it's really awesome to to uh, be the forensic scientist and try to figure out a way to let the other investigators know who did it and where they're going. And if you're the murderer, you're sitting there trying to like be like, no, 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 they have this thing over here. It's obviously that. And the game gives you a way to like try to diffuse it away from you, especially if you picked good items right. like you as the murderer you kind of have to pay attention before you pick your items oh, what's going sure. on you can yeah. so what you can up. blend in and then as an investigator it's just this whole thing of like trying to figure out you have one guess one single guess and you have to figure out where to use it and then if you've already used yours but you're still good you're going to try to talk the other people into using their guess for what you think is the right thing right. you know you have to like narrow it down it's like well i'm gonna and the funny thing is like even if you know who the murderer is you don't exactly know the murder weapon and the clue. You right. have to right. know that stuff. So right. it's like, well, I'm going to try this and this. Whoa, well, whoa, well, that didn't work. Oh, no. Okay, dude, you got to try this and this. There's like, well, I don't, you might be it. I'm not going to try that. You know? right. I don't want to waste it's, my vote on right. your... It's, it's such a good game, and I've had so much success with it. It works great with big groups, and everybody should have it on their top 100 list. And I think Tom should be making edits. I think that's where he went. Is this um, our master computer? Edits. What happens if I... <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> 
This is a phrase I never thought I'd say, but if you're a good murderer in this game, then you should be thinking about, I'm going to pick something that's amb ambiguity, that is ambiguous. Ambiguous? Ambiguous yes. enough. That's Full a word. of ambiguity? That's, it's yes. ambiguous? Yes, sure. it's ambiguous enough that even if they know I'm the murderer, they're going to be wondering, is it the hatchet or is it the cleaver? You know what I mean? Yeah. So that you've given yourself some outs. I've, you I've know. totally been called out as the murderer in this game <laughs> and been like... But yo, how'd I do it? You know? Mm -hmm. Like, they knew you it was me. You straight up said, oh, yeah, I killed them. That's right. But how did I do it? You can't put me in jail unless you figure out how I did it. <laughs> quite literally. You'll never pin it on me, copper. Listen, if you can't yes, find I the murder weapon, there's no ow. murder weapon. <laughs> right. You don't know that. You can't put me away, see? That's right. There's no body. There's no crime. It's like that key and peel where he has the rapper who makes a mixtape exactly about him. Oh, right. it back the whole time. It's like, yeah, but, you know, was it the puzzle or was it the piece of paper? That's I mean, right. you'll never know. Mm -hmm. There's no body, there's no crime, I love it. <laughs> All right, where am I at, man? I'm just getting so lost. 17. My 17. number 17 is brand spanking new to the list. Woo! And you know we, just, that? we just did a voice that oh. very much ties to this. Nice. <gasps> 1960? No, the copper, you'll never catch uh, me, copper. Oh, that is back to Kennedy, sorry. <laughs> Watergate? My 17 is Detective City oh, of Angels. Nice. Yeah, that's a fine game, see? I like it. <laughs> this game is quite a fine game indeed. I like that this uses this whole, you know, th there's been a lot of whodunit games yeah. lately. Yeah. There's quite a few of them. A lot of them feel derivative. And that's still okay. Those games are fine. They're fun, you know, figuring out the, the, the whodunit, all that uh, part of it. This game manages to do that. And it's covered in gorgeous artwork. Yeah. And it's mechanically way more interesting than a lot of those games. Sure. It feels like they did not just monkey something that's popular. Right. I think this is part of a one-two punch, though, to Sherlock Holmes. Oh, yeah. I mean, Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective oh, my word, is yes. done. I mean, yeah. I would rather style. Sherlock Holmes be done in this style. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, and then it's got some shape. You're mm -hmm. telling a cohesive story. It's not just this... Here's a bunch of clues. Just wait. Maybe, maybe he's going to announce that soon. And he's, maybe. He's sitting there like, these guys stole my thunder. I don't know. Yeah. Sherlock Holmes uh, is public domain. It is. Yeah, that's true. It is. But I like this setting. Yeah. Quite I a do bit. too. I like the, the gumshoe, you know, right. femme fatale kind of thing. Noir. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's like, you know, noir setting. I love that one player. There's a few ways to play this. Sure. So you don't have to do it this way, but. The standard way, if you want to call it something, is with one player kind of running the game almost as you would a role-playing session. Mm. And that is such a clever way to run a game because that player will control the answers that are given to questions the detectives pose. They will decide when to be a little more forgiving or when to force the player to ask for more information. There's just... There's such a fun way to do it, you know? It's incredibly engaging and interesting. I love this game. It's so cool. You can play solo even with a secondary book that tells you the answers to the questions you're looking for. Um, there's a lot in this box. A lot of content in here. I also think it's interesting that this is a game that you would think would lend itself to being a cooperative game. And I know you can play it that yeah, way. Yeah, you can do that. But I think it's interesting that the main the main way to play the game is not cooperative. Right. You know what I mean? Look, right. you're two detectives. You're you're both trying to, to follow your own leads. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're not going to necessarily... I wouldn't want to play this co-op. I like yeah, the way it's I, I kind of like this yeah, idea. Yeah, you can play co-op. It's fine. Yeah. Co-op, but... But yes, it again makes it feel more distinct right. if everybody is their own detective. Exactly. You can bribe people to go to eavesdrop on what that detective is finding right. out. Mm -hmm. And then you have information. It's possible I'll know about a clue mm -hmm. for days, in-game days, before you know about it. Right. It's great. That's it's, cool. It's really cool. interesting. Detective City of Angels is a superb example of how to finalize an idea mm. with every aspect of that. My 17. People's Choice number 17 has been on the list for five years. It was 14 last year. Highest it ever got was 10. Mm -hmm. um, this is probably on Z's list somewhere. Mm -hmm. If it hasn't been, it will mm -hmm. be eventually. Mm -hmm. Days of Wonders' deepest, heaviest game, mm -hmm. Five Tribes. Mm -hmm. oh. Five Tribes, very, very popular game. 
Um, this one still holds up. But a lot ah, of the sorry. days of... Huh? Ah, see? <laughs> I don't believe that for a second. Um, got your boys days of it. Wonders had a lot of games that did well when they came out and then disappeared in obscurity. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is one that has not. No. Five Tribes has done extremely well. Uh, this is one that has risen for me. I and I want to say this is Katawa's heaviest game too. Hmm. I guess Yamata is really heavy yeah. though. Yeah, maybe. I feel They're like this one has same. more depth than Yamata does. Yamata, Five Tribes, Cyclades maybe. That's oh, a lot yeah. going on. Well, either way, this is your number 17. Fine pick. My number 16 has been on my list for six years. Just say it already. We're running late. <laughs> <laughs> Caverna. It's my, uh, one of, well, it's not my highest. Of that the donkey again. How is that donkey donkey back juice? In. You need, come on, man. It's so good. I, I don't really, like having that I really, on my shoulder every I, did, I, I don't mind the cover so much until it's big like this. And yeah. I look at it like, oh, man, that's the cover. I look How am I ever going to get people to play this game? You teach this to people. Face. You bring this. I do. Pull out of and you're like, would you like to play this game? <laughs> Covered <laughs> in badly illustrated donkeys? <laughs> <laughs> this this game has completely knocked a Agricola off my list. Blah, blah, blah. There's always going to be people split between yeah. the two. Some people like Agricola better because you can pick the cards. You have your own mm -hmm. customization, but it's also a tougher game. I like this better because I like the wide range of options. Yeah. I just do. This one. This is a sandbox Euro, isn't it? You were saying... Th 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 no. No? It's not the same thing. No? I don't feel like it is. I mean, you can build what you want. Yeah. yeah. But I think... Let me make my own definitions, okay. Michael. <laughs> just, I, I was, I was just it, like, oh, yeah, it is definitely a sandbox game. What? You can't change your mind? It's That's not. not how it's the, probably it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Stop looking at the donkey. You're getting confused. It's got its, it it's, it's, it's weaving its spell on you. <laughs> Anyhow. I will worship donkey juice. <laughs> I love this game a lot. I like, I like the fact that there's always a plethora of places yeah. to put stuff. Roy takes my really good action. I got a better one, you know. So my number sixteen, Caverna. Yeah, Roy. Sorry to take I, his action. I clock. really like that action, honestly. <laughs> my number sixteen is a game that has kind of come on very strong. It's a newer game. Is that a clue? No, no. Come on. No, it's not a come on <laughs> game. Look, let's. I'm, I'm going to get right to the root of it here. This is root. There you go. Root. That's not even a little subtle, Mike. I'm not trying to be subtle. <laughs> I'm, I'm just putting it right out there. Root is a uh, an asymmetrical game. Way to bury the lead. <laughs> <laughs> That's worse. The leader, bury the leader. Um, this is a um, a game that, for all intents and purposes, is a war game. From best I can understand, and now all the war gamers are gonna gonna Wait, you haven't go played? crazy. No, I played it. Oh, okay. From what I understand of what war games are, I'm not a big war gamer. And this game uh, scared me off a bit when I heard how it was described, but I have to admit I was taken in by the art direction and I was taught this, which I think is the best way, is if somebody oh, yeah. knows, really the game, really knows the really game, is. somebody who knows the game and really? knows all... Is it that complicated? No, it's That's just thing, every faction not, plays different. It's not so? that complicated, but, but I'm telling it's you... It's like, I mean... Small world has more factions than this. Nah, yeah, but they all play different. Uh, score differently. Yeah, yeah. You know? this, this, you're, you're trying to do different things in this game. That's the big difference: is that you're trying to to do different things, all of which are going to get you to victory points. But they you also get play them in different differently. Way. They play very differently. What, what's the your favorite birds, faction? The birds are a programming faction, and the cats start with power, and so He's they're more of the. Well, my favorite is the woodland. Uh, of the base, of the base, uh, uh, uprising, uh, 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 exploding, exploding, wrecking people. Right. They just leave. You're What's just your like, favorite? I've only played the cats, so I ha I don't mm. really have a basis to say one is my favorite. The cats are extremely straightforward. They are. I yeah. feel like they were way too straightforward. I, and like I played the with cats, a bunch of experienced players, and it wasn't close. Like I like. The, the Vagabond is cool, too. That, and that's the thing, is I've played all of the base uh, factions. I like them quite a bit. I've played in games with the Otters and the uh, Lizard Cult. I haven't played those two myself. I oh, mean, Lizard Cult uh, is annoying. But, but this is a game that I think was very ambitious in scope, and it actually is a very viable good game. It's not good because it's weird. It's not good because it's asymmetrical. It's good because it's good. It happens to be asymmetrical. Oh. 
No, I totally. I'm, I'm feeling you. Him. You see what I'm getting? At? Sometimes 100%. games get credit because they're weird or they're different or they're unique. This is just a good mechanically good game, and it happens to be very asymmetrical, and it happens to be a bit odd, and it happens Thanks. to feel very different than most games you play. But underneath it all is a rock solid design. I, I can't like argue. Smart. He sounds so smart, it, there. Underneath so. the earth, yeah, where roots live. That's right. Root is a game that will still be played in five years. That's not saying a whole oh, lot. Oh, it's saying a lot. Who's playing? Uh, Who's playing games from two years ago? Ugh. I can't. I can't. Ha, think ha, ha, I like most of the games we've talked garbage. about. So I can't <laughs> anyway, my number sixteen is Root. I have to play. You know what? The main thing I'm get taken away from this chunk of ten is that I, I need to play more popular games. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wait, you it's taking you this long to figure that out? This is more of a reminder, really, <laughs> than a realization. <laughs> Go ahead, Roy. All right. My number 16 is a brand new game, new to the list, of mm -hmm. course, but it's a very fresh game, and everybody is talking about this game right now. This is my... Isle of Cats. My favorite superhero game that is Marvel wow. Champions. Wow. 16! 16! <laughs> I have been playing the, the crap out of, of this game, and part of that's Tom's this fault. This game's been out for like less than three months. I really enjoy this either game. lower, not on? I don't even know. I feel like I, we did the review for this game, but I have played it a ton more <laughs> times since we did the review, and I enjoy it a lot. 16, though? I enjoy the game. Pick any other number, like <laughs> 17, I mean 12. I enjoy playing this game a lot solo, but it's also fun. I feel like it's better with lower player counts because it I guess I'm shorter. not surprised, but I am surprised at the same time. Like, mm. but I, I, the I'm thing, surprised that it's that high. The thing is the fact that like I've played some of the new expansion stuff that came out, and I'm seeing some of the really cool things they can do with the system, and the fact that each hero they've had so far has felt very different mm. helps me like really get excited. And now when they announce new stuff, I'm just like, oh man, that works different. This Wait, was this your number one of the year? No. My other of the year, pretty high, too. I got some new games. I'm sorry. Cult hey, the man, new. let wow. the kid enjoy the new things, all right, old man? <laughs> and and I'm not 100% sure, like, how high, if this will go up or if this will go down. You know, Cosmic get off encounter. of. With more Cosmic game, with more stuff gross. for this game, it could go higher. Right. But also, you know, it could get samey after a while. I yeah. don't know. But, but you're I, saying you're I really finding enjoy it the not game samey. Right now. All right. I based the game off of, As like, he said legendary how much I'm excited. I said it last so then this yeah. is higher than legendary for you then yes currently because so i really want to play this game i really want to play more of it <laughs> and legendary i away. played it a lot no i'm over here yeah. saving the, the distance same, is, it's allowed you to get very bold now because you're across the table what's the what's the lowest number that he could have chosen that would have not caused you to have a corner 41. <laughs> Honestly, I knew Tom was gonna be like, "What?" But it's still fun. I just, it's fun. I, I can see it, man. You've been playing. No, I can't. He has yeah. been playing like a madman. I guess yeah. I. Yeah, that's why I said I'm it. not surprised. But at the same time, I guess I didn't expect it to be this yeah. high, yeah. that fast. That's all. Right, sure. right, right. I'm but I mean, that's where it is. Of course, I, I don't know what I'm excited. talking about. Let's move on because you uh, <laughs> these same criticisms maybe turn back to me in the future. Oh, he just realized them. Mm. All right, my number sixteen is a game that is loved by. I, 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 I haven't met anyone who doesn't love. Factory Funner. Hate this game. <laughs> Hate Universally it. liked. Very, I mean, there is... Um, Have you played it? No. Have you? No. Have I? I'm not sure it exists. No? I played Factory Fun. Okay, well, same thing. Uh, this one has hexagonal tiles instead of squares. In this game, you are putting together your own factory. And you are doing so by drafting tiles uh, in a real-time sense, though you Ooh. really don't want to be too fast. Because then you can get penalized if you just grab one without really looking. And then you are uh, connecting these pipes to the different machines in order to generate victory points by having these connections. Having, you know, green goop become blue goop and collecting it. And it's, it's, a, it's a puzzle. It's a puzzle game. Play like ten rounds of drafting a thing, putting it somewhere and going, uh, Ooh, I can run this pipe to here. That's the same color. And then uh, the output from there, I can feed into this machine. All right. If you don't like the way that sounds, I swear, like if I just said that same thing, you'd sit there and go, oh, that sounds so fun. <laughs> you would. Oh, you absolutely. would say that. I agree. I think there are people out there who are right now going, woof. I mean, that I'm, sounds bad. I'm surprised because this doesn't even sound like your type of game. You don't really like real-time games, do you? Because I don't. I don't. I don't. Yeah. This is a very minor real-time album. Okay. Okay. Very minor. All right. 
It's not a real-time element. I mean, like, the rest of this, all of that that's happening there, you are not doing in real time. Okay. I would hate that game. Yeah, yeah. I like puzzles. Yeah, and yeah. this very much feels like managing, you have to like spatial management mm -hmm. a lot. You have to like puzzle solving and how to make whatever you ended up with work for you. I love this game. Man, you're making this it sound is, like something I want to play now, unfortunately. I played this on uh, the cruise, actually. I think I taught it to somebody on the cruise last time. I don't know why it came and up. And they jumped. <laughs> but, uh, no, they survived. We yeah. fished them back out. Um, <laughs> no, it went over well. And I, again, was just again reminded of how much I enjoy this game. What was this last year? This was your 63 last year. Really? Wow. I had Factory Fun on my list for a while. And uh, I, think I replaced it with Factory Funner because I do like this one a little like bit better. I think grammatically it's incorrect. Is it funner? How much funner is it than Factory Funner? I would funner? say it's at least 1.6% funner than Factory Funner. funner. Okay, 1.6% <laughs> funner. Good. The People's Choice for number 16 has been on the list now. This is its fourth year. It was 10 last year, 23 and 46. Um, this one's probably going to be up here for a while, even though I hear that the sequel's getting some hate. And that's Orleans. Yeah. Orleans. Who was telling me that the sequel was getting hate? Hey, I've heard very, very negative things about Orleans stories. New Orleans. Orleans. Pas de. Pas de? Orleaner. Or Orleanser. <laughs> like the Orleansing. Hunter. Factory Orleaner. Orleanser. <laughs> anyway, Orleans is a bag pulling game. And even though. I don't know where Altapano. Did that even show up in the top one? I don't I think so. I think it was higher up. Maybe it did show did up. It? Or, uh, I don't remember, but yeah. some people say said that they would like it better. No, Orleans is still the king of this of this particular genre. Um, this one, the high quality components that came out for the game don't hurt it. I like it a lot, but I mean, this one I see consistently played, sure. and even without the expansions, this one is doing really, really well. Yeah, yeah. The cover. Mm. So the lucky anybody played the game. Yeah, it's pretty awful. You got yeah, that's that true. Guy's I'm there, telling like, you, help me out of my helmet. There, you guys like, ha ha, you ain't getting out of that helmet. There is a distinct <laughs> lack of uh, donkeys on that cover too. It's a, it's, it's a amazing to me. Like opportunity. when you blow up that cover and put it on there like that. <laughs> it's really, my goodness, it's shockingly. How bad. does this game get any popularity or traction? I'm right. sorry. I mean, yeah. I know art is subjective, but <laughs> I want to jump. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so that's Orleans, the People's Choice number 16. Halfway. <laughs> Alrighty, my number 15 was 21 last year, 14 the year before that, and then 142 the year before that. Okay. And and you gave a reaction back in 2017 because of that huge jump, and it this is distinctly because of the expansions. Okay. Hmm. And that is Champions of Midgard. Uh, wow! 15. I love the game, but with the expansions, yeah. it's phenomenal. That's, okay, that's insanity. That's very high. I like dice. I like rolling dice for combat, but I also like the fact that I can mitigate that. And with the expansion, I sit there and go, "Okay, I'm going to fight that monster. I'll take these the green dice, and I'll take some of these dice." And you make that nice mix of dice, and you sit there and say, "How many am I going to use on this?" Ah, it's just so much fun. Mm -hmm. And then it's a worker placement game, yeah. which I like. Mm -hmm. Strong theme. There's a lot of Viking games that are out there that are themeless and yet still somewhat shown up on people's lists. But this one is Viking themed to the core, or at least fake Viking themed. Right. I, I don't care about real Vikings. This fake nonsense of them fighting trolls, that's what I want. Mm -hmm. I want to fight trolls. That's what Vikings mm -hmm. fought with dice. Look what they did it. Gotcha. I Duffing love enemies. Champions of Midgard. It is fantastic. It's still very high on my list. In fact, it moved up since last year, 21 up to 15. So I don't know what else to say. This is one of my favorite Viking games. <laughs> <laughs> my number 15, Champions of Midgard. My number 15 Garbage. is a relatively small box game that has been out for a long time. It is very rarely talked about, but yet has spawned a number of expansions. I believe it's been consistently in print pretty much the entire time that it's been on. I would call it a family weight game, and what better family game to play than a game about what Black Plague. Plague. Black Plague. And it's not Zombicide. Oh, wait. 
Yes. A cat cutting game? No, no, no. Come on now. This is a real game. This is Rattus. Rattus. Wow! I adore. Wait, wait, what? Yeah. It is about the Black Plague. It's He's about right. the Black Plague. I don't know. I know. You said it's been consistently in print yeah, and I... spawned other games. It's well, Rattus the card game. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> expansions. Expansions. There's oh, like four expansions for sure, Rattus. Sure. There definitely is. A yeah. lot of modules. And I believe that Rattus has been consistently in print pretty much since it's been out. You can still get it now. It's at its heart. From another country. No, no. You, you can get base Rattus here. From the thrift store? <laughs> what the heck of a thrift You're being a jerk right now, okay? <laughs> Shut up, Democrat! A plague upon That's you. That's right. I'm going to be moving oh, the execution no, look, I like Rattus a lot, too. Yeah. I just, this is not, you are not going online to cool stuff and buying Rattus. Well, no, but you can go to Amazon and buy it. So it's, a, it's at its heart, a very simple area control game with a uh, character selection mechanic where you don't have to choose these special powers of these characters but they allow you to move your cute your cubes represent population and you've got these rat tokens all across the board and you don't know what's going to be on the opposite side of those rats but usually they're going to be removing population from the board the more of these characters that you take on to gain their powers the more likely it is that when you flip when you move the executioner into a region and flip these rat tiles over the more likely it is that your cubes are going to get removed which you don't want at the end of the game you simply want to have more cubes of your color on the board than anyone else you want to have more population on the board than anybody else and you do that by manipulating those cubes through these characters and by moving the executioner around to other players and trying to make it so that you it's a really the dark it. theme really, it really if you think is, about it but it's so I mean but honestly it's done in such Fine. a playful and silly way and to be to be fair this probably would not be this high if it was just the base game I really think the the Pied Piper expansion adds a lot uh, almost a necessary thing if you want to play it more than maybe 10 times um, but this is a game that nobody ever talks about but I've never taught it to somebody and they're like I hate that game most of the time like, that's a really good game oh I like it I'm with you and you're I right like it, yeah. it is in, it says only two left in stock parentheses more on the way. Yeah. <laughs> it can't be more in print than that. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. 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 And, and I like I, that. I had it for a long, long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like the game. I did get rid of it eventually, but um, I, it's a good pick. Yeah. I like it. I did. For some reason, this game just speaks to me. The Rattus. Mm hmm. Yeah, right. Squeak, squeak. I don't know. What's <laughs> the name of that movie? A Wolf. Oh, I was just about to sing oh, that song, know. too. That's not mm -hmm. it, right? What is um, it called? Ben, what's the song? Ben? Ben. 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 <laughs> na, 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 na. That's a song. Michael yeah. Jackson sings it. Mm -hmm. As a kid. Yep. Ben. It's not the name of the movie, though. Who cares? Go. Yeah. <laughs> All the right. rat is named Ben, and it's the it's that creepy guy from Back to the Future, the father yeah, of Back to the Future. Yeah, the not called Ben. It's his name. My number 15 is another very new game, it's cool. okay. but this is also a game set in my favorite IP of all time, and that is Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-Earth. I love this app-driven system oh, yeah, with Lord that. of the Rings theme, and I just I love playing Lord of the Rings characters. Like I grew up on the books and the cartoons, and when the movies came out, I went to like the first night showing of everything Lord of the Rings, and I really enjoy the campaign of this game. I've enjoyed playing it with other people. I've enjoyed playing it solo as well. I actually played this game last night. Um, started up a new campaign, but I've really been enjoying Lord of the Rings Journey. You started it over again. Uh, I started the DLC campaign. Mm. Oh, okay. So they have like a DLC campaign you can buy and start, like, start playing through that. It's Willard. still a ton of fun. Willard. That's yeah, it. Was, yeah, yeah, ben yeah. is the name of the rat, though, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Kay. Sorry, there's no Willard in, in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> there could be. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this is this is pretty fun because you're, you're doing all the different stuff, and I love the app-driven nature of it, and there's like branching paths where it's like, do you want to go this way? Do you want to go that way? You're exploring different things, but then there's, I like to play it on like the normal mode where it's like there's this constant threat of you trying to race through the stuff. You can't do everything, but you have to try to get there and get the objectives complete. And the objectives kind of like unfold as you're playing the game. You're not 100% sure right. what you're going to be doing this time you play when you start. It's like, oh crap, we got to run over there and do that. And now we got to look for something. We got to like look, one of these tokens or one of these places has to have it. What's, what, can I deduce what's the best place to go? Mm -hmm. And there's some scenarios where it's just like you're talking to people trying to figure out who the murderer is in this thing. Mm -hmm. So you're asking them and questioning stuff. It plays very different from That's like cool. part of the game to part of the game. And it's very like the way the app works makes it so you can get 
get all sorts of different experiences just out of this one game, and it all has that Lord of the Rings flavor on it that I love, so that's why it's my number 15. So this is definitively better than Mansions. I wouldn't say that. I would never put this game on the same like number as another game. I'm just saying that. That is just wrong. They're not the same game. So there's that. Do you think it's as expandable as something like Mansions? No, no. There's way more stuff for Mansions out currently. No, but no. Mean, but I mean, do you think it's yeah, is it potentially expandable like that? Do you think that it, it lends itself to, to... Yeah, but I don't know if it will go as far. I know. Yeah. I think maybe like next week or something like that, there's like a scheduled announcement for the expansion, hmm. another expansion for this. Okay. Yeah. Another but expansion? Is there one already? There's like a tiny little expansion box. It comes with a couple cards and like some, some bosses. You there better play. be something scheduled from Fantasy Flight soon since they keep saying cancellations. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, hmm. so I don't know. I don't know if this game will get as much content as for Mansions just because I feel like they've restructured their entire structure right. at their company. That stuff is not coming out that it fast. It depends when that Amazon Lord of the Rings series comes out. Oh, that's a that good point. That out, is a good point. Suddenly the interest in Lord of the Rings is going to go through the roof. Oh, that is yep. true. Ooh, There's that too. That's a good call. So I'm excited. I'm excited to see more for the game. I would love to be able to play the game with more characters as well. But uh, it's currently my number 15. All right, my number 15 uh, is a game that I, again, had two choices between two games that are very similar, but last time that I did this, and the fight was between, again, my internal fight was between Ghost Stories and Last Bastion. Mm -hmm. I decided to go with Last Bastion. In this case, I'm saying Nirishima Hex 3rd Edition instead of the fantasy version of this. Mm -hmm whose name is escaping me right now. Yeah, but there's also no... Is there any expansions for the fantasy one? There's one. Is How many expansions are there for this? Or something? There are more than one. <laughs> there's like <laughs> ten or something. There's, there's way more content for this. That's, that's true, but that, that's also that was the reverse for ghost stories. But Different situation. This is armies. The content's easier to jump in and play. I suppose I also... Really like this theme. Mm. I, there's a familiarity there that I'm going. I would be missing. I mm. if the apocalypse ever comes, I'm hanging out with Z. Yeah, no kidding. Why? He's like a familiarity. Yeah. I got it. I'm not gonna <laughs> do well in the real thing. I just like to think about it while I sharpen my various knives. Anyway, Nirishima Hex. I really Monolith enjoy. Monolith Arena. Yeah. Monolith Arena. Thank you. Yes. I heard you. I heard you. You said it. I missed yeah. it. Damn. Um. That's a great game also. I and mean, honestly, get whichever one you want. But I like this one a little bit better. That's why I put this one on the list. And I just love the way this plays out. It's a very puzzly game. Again, going back to the way we were talking about Factory Funner mm -hmm. and the idea of puzzles. This is a fighting game. But it develops like a puzzle game in which you are setting various traps. You are positioning your fighters and your modules and your whatever is so that when a fight does trigger, you'll come out on top. Mm. And those fights only happen when one of the two players triggers that fight by discarding the appropriate token or if the board fills. I like that a lot. I like that you can have the feeling of having the, uh, having the upper hand shift back and forth mm -hmm. and back and forth. And so at the end of your turn, I'm thinking, ooh, okay, I'm in trouble here. This isn't looking so good. But at the end of my turn, I'm feeling like you don't want to trigger a fight on right, your turn because right. I'm right now it changed. I love that. I love that feeling. Um, this is just great. They just came up with a new army for this not too long ago. Yet another one. So, yeah, lots of content as well. You'll find something to like here. Would you consider it an abstract? Yes. No. It feels like an abstract to me. It is. Though. I would not consider it an abstract. Yeah, he's no. wrong. <laughs> I certainly have been in the past. <laughs> but this was your 14 last year. Oh, wow. It's really close. Oh, okay, there right you there. go. Nirishima Hex 3rd Edition. All right, People's Choice. I just made a video on their number 15. No. Which has been on the list for the last 10 years. Started at 8. The highest was 3. Last year it was 12. And this is the game in which I just talked about because there's 20 different things for it. And that's Ticket to Ride. Ah, yes. Ticket to Kark. Mm -hmm. uh, Ticket to Ride, S extremely successful game, still doing well, and they managed to somehow re keep reinventing this game. Yeah. I think more successfully than, say, Carcassonne. Absolutely. Because, like, yeah. for example, Carcassonne did Carcassonne Amazonas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, that didn't light the world on fire, but Ticket to Ride New York, 
goes on target. Mm -hmm. Right. No, I right. know. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's just more wider appeal, maybe. I don't know why, but I think they just did a better job. And also, they did some good job at hitting like the mass mm -hmm. with this with this game. Like mm -hmm. that, I think Ticket to Ride's boost. One of it, they're one of the first computer game. And then to iPad, iPhone later on. Right. With this, and it was just well done. Right, yeah. right. That's right. true. And that the does not this hurt. was very good, yes. You know, and this may sound a little too simplistic, but also if you're trying to get new people into gaming and they see this cover or they see Carcassonne or they see even Catan, I think this is going to be something that's more appealing to yeah, people. people like trains. Yeah, it just it looks more inviting than those other two right. games. You know right. what I mean? Um you know, we, we forget, as somebody who plays a lot of games, that those, just the box covers alone can seem intimidating to people. Mm -hmm. you know oh, I mean? sure. I'm, nothing very, about, I'm hyper aware of that, Yeah, actually, nothing about but. this looks intimidating. I really like this game, and like I said, later on this week, or early next week, you'll see my, all my tickets. I ranked all the tickets right stuff. You did? Mm -hmm. I did. What's your number one? Well, say it now. I can tell you. Say it publicly and ruin your own <laughs> list. <laughs> all right, let's move on. All right, so now let's move to my favorite Viking game of all time. <laughs> Although this one has considerably less theme than Champions of Midgard. You already Feast for Odin. <laughs> no, I didn't. Ah! Feast for Odin. Oh, it must have been the People's Choice? I think the People's Choice. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think the People's Choice did it. Yeah. Oh. This was my number 10 last year, and the year before that, 88. It's definitely moved up, and so I had a chance to... And then they, it was 88. Then it went to 10? Yes. And 14 now, which is the same as 10, basically. Well, I've been able to yeah. play it a lot more. You finally and figured out what all 82 positions <laughs> on the board do. That's what it was. Actually, Damn. I'm a lot better. This is definitely a game you get better at you through do. play. You do. Like, if you play, if you never played this before and I played against you, I'll probably do you, decently at the game. Yeah, I mean, you right, right. Um, because learning how to fill that board up and what all the spaces do, I love it, though. Mm -hmm. I really do. I Every time I play this, I pick, like, a different tack. On a, on a strategy, there's some main strategies in the game. I'll pick one of them and then try to run it up and see what I yeah. can do. Mm -hmm. I like it. It's really enjoyable. Uh, they came out with an expansion, which I thought was fine, but not... I wouldn't say it's... Eh, it's not necessary. It's just a very really fun game. So, my number 14, Feast for Odin. All right, my number 14, I believe, has shown up on the People's Choice and or your list as well. I'm 99% sure it will go nowhere near your list. Oh, you don't um, know that. This is one well, of those don't go near um, you hybrid list. style games that I, that wow. I uh, have been so fond of, which is they've got a, a strong thematic component, but they have Euro mechanics underneath it. This is Lords what? of Hellas. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's Whoa. true. Lords of Hellas. Probably not on Z's list. High. I haven't yeah. played it. Yeah. Um, Much like basically every other game on this list. What's going on? Yo. <laughs> <laughs> you used to be you obscure, man. Mike is like swiping well, your feet. Off I guess, right although this is anything this but obscure. obscure. This is this is. Um, I just uh, need to play more games. Yeah, it's a big sprawling game, and I and I will say that um, while I love a whole lot of it, one of the things that it, it does have a tough barrier to entry. Yeah, um, right. th th there are a fair amount of rules to keep track of, but if you are willing to invest. I'm not. Right. If you're willing to invest the time to learn it, it's a really solid game. It's a really nice take on that dudes on a map um, where there's much more to it. It's got four different win conditions. And, mm -hmm. you, and, and what I like about it is that while there have been discussions online about one of those four uh, conditions being significantly easier than the other, I personally haven't found that in the games that I've played. I have felt like you have to really keep in mind what other people are trying to do right. and not only go for what you are going for, because usually by maybe turn three, you have a pretty good notion of what of those four conditions you have a better shot at than anybody else. And you have to not only be focusing on that, but focusing where are they at? The other people. They're clearly yeah. going for monster killing. I can't ignore that. I just picked mine at the beginning of the game. I'm going to go for it no and matter you, what. Well, and you can certainly... But if and, somebody else is doing that, it right. makes it and significantly gonna, weaker. And they're going to get out of my way. Right. But there's just so many things that I think are really smart and clever about this game. You know, sending your priests to the uh, to the temples to increase your stats. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just... The game works for me. I do wish it was a little bit more elegant in the rules. I yeah. do wish there were fewer edge cases. Um, but I think that the 
overall experience is so strong that I'm willing to forgive that. Uh, I really like Lords of Hellas a lot. I've really enjoyed my plays of this as well. But uh, I, I think I like played it multiple times, one several different ways. I'm just like, okay, cool, Lords of Palace. I didn't feel like it was a game that was, like you said, it's Here's not super that. easy to get back out. But I really enjoyed it. <laughs> I played it. I conquered everybody I played against. So I moved on. I'm not Once very I good at the game. game you know? I actually had to, I had to leave the state because you're right. winning this game too many times. Mm -hmm. you know? Wow. No, yeah. I'm, just kidding, just kidding. I'm pretty horrible. I really wow. thought this would be on your list. It really seems like a Roy Canada game. Yeah. Yeah. But once again, it's like what he said is just the, sometimes like the, the rules are kind of eh, and I, I don't actually own the game. And I never actually felt like I needed to go Say out no and more. buy it. Yeah, you know? that's, that's that's a good point. But <laughs> <laughs> go. What What's your fourteen? All right. Is it a game you own? Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, no, it's not. Oh. Um, so this is Hellas and this a space game? No. <laughs> I know everyone's shocked. Everyone's shocked. Okay, which one? Anyway, so I played tons of board games. I played like Carcassonne and like get it, and all these different things. I'm behind. But this game, <laughs> this game is the game that like made me sell off my magic cards. I was playing tons of D and D at the time. But when I played this game, I'm like, board games can do this. This is Battlestar Galactica. Mm. The fact that like you can play this game semi co-op sort of thing, but there's a traitor in the midst. And like you're trying to get to the end and like figure out how to get the ship to win. I had never even watched the TV show, but yeah. I, I went to my friends who played D and D and played this game multiple times um, during like a, a weekend thing we did. And like I was enamored with this game. We ended up getting a copy and playing it with our D and D group a ton of times. And I just loved Battlestar Galactica and seeing this. And then I ended up playing several other cooperative games after that, like Shadows Over Camelot and several other things. And just mm. seeing what board games could do, like like modern board games or like yeah. these cool thematic board games where you can work together like I had done in so many other D&D &D games and stuff like that I meant like oh man this like board games can do cool things so it just I dove in head first and I love Battlestar Galactica and the way it works it's definitely a hard game to get a hold of and there's probably other games that can do sort of this sort of thing in a short amount of time but I love the epic nature of this and the space theme and I've watched all the TV series now and it just fits so well I, I love Battlestar Galactica so said we all this is like one of those lifestyle games, right? You were talking about Waterdeep being a game that RPG players can maybe get them in. I, this is a game that a lot of people will play this board game and very few others. You know what I mean? It's like they'll play Battlestar Galactica consistently, but they don't play other board games much at all. Right, right, right. Um, it, people that like this game are super, super passionate about it. I think they should put a corner in the back of the box. The game that made me sell my magic cards. There you go. Roy Canada. Mm -hmm. Maybe for the good. new edition. You could do worse. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. No, actually, they're... I, They'd be BoardGameGeek.com. <laughs> <laughs> and Z, Z be like, I got it! They got you! <laughs> All right, my number 14 is a game that's been on my list for a long, long time. I get a lot of garbage for it. As you should. From Mr. Vassal. Oh, really? Blue Moon oh, is my wow. 14th. City. Oh, it's just Blue Moon or Blue Moon Legends, which is the same thing. Yeah. I said Blue Moon because, again... When I tackled this list, I was like, I gotta pick one, Blue Moon or Blue Moon Legends. If I'm being completely Same honest. Game. There's no difference. The art's better here. Yeah, it's absolutely. I mean, again, if you're really thinking about it, Blue Moon is not the same printing. Cards are large format. Mm -hmm. You can see more of the artwork. There's, I mean, yeah, it's slightly different. It's mm -hmm. not available, but it is slightly different. Get the other one, it's fine, it's close enough. But I'm saying Blue Moon. I really like this. The dueling game for two players, bunch of decks, think Summoner Wars-esque, you know. You pick your faction, you go against each other. Um, I like it a lot. It's a fairly simple game where the, uh, the trick is all in the little wrinkles to the pretty standard turn breakdown. And you can do a little deck building in this one if you want to also. There's, you know, it depends how deep down that rabbit hole you want to go. Uh, you can do deck building, you can do advanced to deck building where your deck of cards can go from 30 cards to 40 cards mm -hmm. and you can do all sorts of crazy stuff. I really like this. I've played a ton of this. It's my I want to say second most played game ever. Wow. So There's a top 10 coming out later I, this year. I really like Blue Moon. I used to think that this was a Back in the day when I was first started playing it, I thought, man, this is a pretty simple game. This is almost like war. And then I played against somebody who was good at it. Yeah, and I never understood that whole rush to me. I never understood me. that whole war. It's game. a much you, deeper. Did you ever subscribe to that one? I forget. 
I'm afraid to say, okay, no, I got to do it against okay. me. Yeah, I just felt. Look, I went back and played Blue Moon Legends when it came out. I said, I must, I, I know, I, I might have had bad mm -hmm. experience when I first played it. And I still hate it. Like, really? hate it. That's all right. Man, I, I once I played against somebody who knew what they were doing and I saw what could be done with the game, I realized that I had no idea what was going on. Yeah, anybody who says this is just war. Yeah. I understand there's luck. It's a card game. Sure. Hit. It's not war. No. It's not flip a card and compare it to the top one you decked. That's, that's just, you know, ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I like it a lot, too. Yeah. All right. Number... 14 for the people has been on the list for four years. Popped on at 12, 8, 11, 14. Same sp position. Whoa. And it's not. Well, that's a spoiler. Well, never mind. It's a so spoiler. Say, no matter what I say. You're about to tell us what it is. Seven Wonders Duel. Ah. What's the game, though? <laughs> <laughs> well, it is Seven yeah. Wonders Duel. I thought that was a spoiler. Mm -hmm. Seven Wonders Duel is the highest of all the two player games that came yeah. from a bigger game. And in fact, I don't think in this category there's a close second. Yeah. You know, they made Caverna and the Grickle sure. and they made all these games, Pillars of the Earth. They made the two player games. Right. None of them had the success that no. differentiated it enough from the base game. Like, not even close. Right. Mm -hmm. No, you're right. You're right. This is one of those games when I first heard about it, I was like, eh, okay, this will yeah. silence those people who cared that much about the two player variant of Seven Wonders. I never cared. And I was like, I guess I'll play it. And I was like, that's how drafting works for two players? Yeah, I love it's so that. very smart. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, this is, a, again, a, a game that you thought was going to be taking advantage of an IP and like, okay, we're going to, and, and, and this game is its own animal. It, it still feels like Seven Wonders, but it doesn't. You know right, what I mean? Right, right. Um, it's really good. I really I like it. I think I personally, it's, neither one made my top 100, but I, would, I prefer this to Seven Wonders. I think Seven Wonders Duel is rated more highly than Seven Wonders hmm. online. I mean. Yeah, it's crazy. Yes, we'll have to wait and see One. where it is. Seven Wonders has not shown up on the people's uh, list. It okay. may or may not. Oh, we'll see. Okay, okay, well. I really love the drafting in this. Just like the pressure of like, I really want that card, but if I flip it over and it's like another war card, he could pass me in this. It's, this, it's very this interesting. This would be good in a party game. Mm. Uh, people's Choice number 14, like Seven Wonders Duel. that's like duel. two numbers, like 10, 4, 10. You know, that'd be really good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, my number 13 has been on the list. This is the second year. Last year it was 11. The year before that it was 149. So it's moved up considerably. Another heavy Euro game, that I enjoy this one a lot. And the expansion helps, although not necessary. And this is Lorenzo Il Magnifico. Mm. Hi. Uh, so now, did you say 13, 11, 149? 149. Well, I had just played it right before the okay. thing, so it didn't pop on. But the more I played it, the more I enjoy it. Once again, not sure who this makes is, these covers trying to sell them to people. This is one I did not like. I, I did not know was on like your this is the food I like platter. You mm. know what I mean? Oh man, I really I I don't know what it is. I think it's the fact that it's a heavy Euro worker placement game kind of thing. But also <laughs> it's like flop. But card. also has an engine building aspect to it. Because as you buy cards, you put them in here, and every once in a while, you can run this go. little engine All right. that's there. I like it. I like that you roll three dice, and it's a dice placement game, but everyone's worker then, that each person has a worker of each of those colors, is that's your number that you have. So I have, if I roll these, I have a two, four, and a five. Right. I like this design <laughs> team and the games that this design team kind of makes. For some reason, I had a miserable experience playing this game. And I, I need to play it again because I only played it once, but I had such a bad experience that I hesitated to. It was just, it felt so punishing to me. There were, it seemed like every single turn, the card that I wanted or needed was one resource away from getting. And it was like, what could I have done differently to have gotten that resource? Could have not played. I could have, yeah. I, 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 that was my approach. I do, it's so well regarded though that I do need to play it again. I don't know why. I'm well regarded by whom? Shh. Well, I don't know. I hear <laughs> people talking. The, the scuttlebutt on the street, the kids. The scuttlebutt on the street. <laughs> right. TikTok, Twitch, they're no, all look, talking about Lorenzo. I don't, if you had a bad, I'm definitely not one of those people. If you had a bad experience playing it, I don't feel like you need to, just because it's popular, you need to keep playing it to make sure. Good you're point. Not missing it's horrible something. I'm never playing it again. Hated it. 
I, hey, you said it was okay to do that. <laughs> now you gotta, you gotta Wait, just suck it up. Okay, what's yeah. your 14? 13. My 13. Well, this is you're gonna get Please your. Be Friday. Oh no, no, this is gonna you're gonna get your revenge because we've already talked about this game and I, you know, I gave you praise earlier for your wonderful suggestion of Master of Respect and here's where I get to take that praise away because you're so wrong about this game. This is another hybrid game that looks like this thematic dungeon crawl experience and it's really a euro puzzle game this is the city of kings this game is fantastic and i think if you don't think it's fantastic you just don't get it that's 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 my my guess here <laughs> What's going you on? You better turn it to I'm the camera. Confused. They can't see that. He's when me. are you making these? Am I just not paying attention to you? I'm that good. I'm that. I can. I can see the future. Yeah. <laughs> the City of Kings is a game where you can take control of a it's character, over. and there's a lot of leveling up that character. Now, again, if you're playing a single scenario, you may not get as much of the character progression, but you can choose to play it in a campaign where you then are going to go further and further along. What I really like about the game is the central puzzle of you have particular things you're trying to accomplish, and it's going to depend on the scenario. You'll have some pick up and deliver scenarios. You'll have some combat scenarios you'll have some exploration scenarios if you like one more than the other focus on those because there's plenty of each and what you have to de realize is that the the creatures that come on the board unless your goal is to defeat those creatures oftentimes you're better off trying to avoid them mm -hmm. or just keep them at bay while you do what you need to do and that puzzle is something that is really compelling to me I also well, at first I love the aesthetic, the aesthetic is gorgeous, but I also like that every creature that comes out is gonna have the same stat bar every time. So the first creature you fight is gonna have the same basic stats. Tell me a little bit about these creatures. Like the thematic nature of the creatures that show up. The thematic creature, or the thematic nature of the creatures is non-existent. They have, they, they're, they're standees, and you literally can pick any standee you want. Okay, if that bothers you, so be it. It doesn't bother me. I'm primarily a Euro gamer, so that doesn't bother me. I do like the aesthetic. I like. I don't feel like you're a Euro gamer. Well, I guess stuff I'm not. I'm you a, just I'm, said Lords of Hellas. I'm an Omni gamer. <laughs> um, I would argue that Omni Hellas, gamer sounds very holier than thou. Way better <laughs> than you. If you like all games like me. <laughs> I don't like just so wait, any game. Explain this to me. When you fight a monster, okay. you just fight so any monster, you like pick, a faceless you, monster? Yeah, you could pick any any one you like. Any one of those will work, right? The stats are the stats, what's set in place. Right, so the stats are in place, but... They might not even match the monster. Bag. I might be like, we're fighting a giant spider, and I'd be like, hey, with a stinger and claws. I'm like, wait, that doesn't match this spider thing. Well, too bad, you already picked the spider-looking creature. It can if you want to, you know, if you inject enough of your own imagination into it. Oh, the baloney! Baloney, that is... Loud the argument every time you're like, ah, oh, that doesn't make any sense. Well, if you use your imagination more, sure. Then in Yinch, I'm fighting <laughs> scorpions. <laughs> that might make it Have a better you game. The expansion. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, 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 love, I love the idea that you've got this, this stat bar that's going to be the same. However, you have these three bags, an easy, medium, and a hard, and it'll tell you to pull any number from, you know, a particular number from some of those bags, and that's what makes the creatures unique. It might, it's fine. It's I good. It. It's, it's a not really, about that, right. Exactly. It's a really good game. I do think that it gets misinterpreted a lot of times because people are expecting a dice chucker, and it's not. There's no, I mean, the dice in there are just for resource collection. Um, Unique. I don't think it feels like uh, other games that, that it often is compared to. My 13, The City of Games. I'm very surprised at this, actually. Yeah, this is not... Wow. Yeah, I don't like it. I, I like played it. it once and didn't really feel like I needed to go back to it. You're all wrong! <laughs> and I haven't played it. You don't know what you're talking about this game. It, I'm trying to do the yeah, Kennedy sure. thing. It sure. wasn't as good as... Why did Kennedy like show up on my lists? Know. All right. My number 13. <laughs> Why Kennedy showing up on your list? <laughs> Kennedy Ask what Kennedy. your list can do for Kennedy. Mm -hmm. Awesome. What? <laughs> my, my number 13 is my highest rated deck building game. It also is slap full of story. This is another brand new game. <laughs> Take it, to the story. List. This is Clank Legacy. Mm. Oh, ah, you bunch I... of sheep. <laughs> you're a sheep. And you're a sheep. You're Who are we following then? You're a sheep. We started this. What are you talking about? I love Clank we Legacy. We started this. It takes. Well, we yeah, didn't start the fire. 
Anyway, this is such a fun game because it takes like Clank with that whole presser lunk going in there trying to grab the treasure, but then injects massive amounts of story in there. Slaps and, like, it in there. <laughs> like it, this is like the kind of legacy game you want to play because there's always stuff to unlock. I had so much fun like racing Tom to all the different locations. Like something new would pop up on the board and it'd be like, crap, it's Tom, Tom's closer. I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna run there faster. You know, it's just okay. Which so happened a lot, by the way. It's so much fun playing through this game. And on top of that, it's got the whole combo aspect of building your deck with deck building. It feels like the whole engine building thing where you're building up, trying to make a deck that works really well as like a well-oiled machine. But then at the end of the game, you throw it all away and then you upgrade some of the cards permanently that people get and then you start again. And it's just fun to play through the game, go through mm. the different stories, do all the different stuff. Stuff carries over and like, the story in this game takes like the whole like near and far aspect of like finding things out on the board, but it just okay. continues to like build upon itself, you know? Mm. And it feels like complete. Like the story itself is like really good, I think. And I, I kind of enjoyed the whole IP of Acquisitions Incorporated and Penny Arcade. I'd listened to some of their D and D podcasts and stuff like that before, which helped it a little bit, but mostly you don't need to know anything about that to enjoy the story in this game. No, is I that think the theme is of this? I think yes. this is the theme where the IP works, and also if you don't know it, it doesn't still matter. works. It's okay. literally okay. So the Clank the Legacy is is a Penny Arcade themed game. It is their D and D group theme. Down there, yeah. yeah, they get together every Penny Arcade and they play a Public Dungeons and Dragons campaign. And they'll and have like people from Wizards with these of the characters, Coast it, and they're just know. being silly and fun. I mean, I don't believe in that, you know, sort of nonsense during any kind of live show. But <laughs> they do that, and these characters have grown, so they stuck them in this game, and it mm. works really well. And it's a completely new story, completely different, but it, it just works with how silly and fun Clank is. And I, I love the story and the theme of this, and I love the gameplay as well. And you can play the game when you're done with the with the campaign. Yeah, and you it, you end up with like a like advanced version of Clank that you can just uh -oh. continue to play through. So uh, yeah, that's huh? why Clank Legacy is my number thirteen. You're writing a permanent marker on your hand. It, first a, of all, it's dry erase. Oh, all right. Secondly, it washes off. Even permanent marker washes off. Eventually, <laughs> I've had to de embrace it. Well, from it's kids. not permanent, then, is it? I've been lied to. This ain't your mama's permanent marker. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, what I was thinking was this ain't your mama's legacy game, and he was like, "This is the legacy game you want to play. This ain't your mama's legacy game." <laughs> All right, my number thirteen has already been mentioned in this chunk. Mm -hmm. By who? By you, Tom. The people or me? You're the one who said it. <laughs> No. Oh, time's up. Wasn't it just mentioned, Kenny? Yeah. Shut up, then. Stop <laughs> being like, no, or last time. The yeah, people. The people just said it. Seven Wonders Duel. Ah. He said I said it. You were the one who spoke from your mouth hole. <laughs> All right? For what, the people. This is no what one you get. likes. This is what you get when you try to be the people. I was not trying You're to be the people. the people. Tell them who the people is. <laughs> I don't have to tell them. You tell them. Put it right there. Put it, put it on the chat. You let them know who the people are. Yeah. <laughs> the people. <laughs> Seven Wonders Duel is a great game with a fantastic expansion that, again, I think does not get a lot of love. Yeah. But it is such a good expansion. I think it opens up the, the game quite a bit. I love the way it feels. It really does feel a little more complete with that expansion. The drafting in this is neat. I found the original game... If I had one issue against it was that you could see, you could math out what you would eventually end up with yeah, yeah. because you had to take a card on your turn. That's the one thing the expansion fixed definitely for me. Like, I don't even have to worry about it now because you can do actions that don't, that take up your turn but don't remove a card from the center. So I can throw off the cadence of I get that, you get that, so I'm stuck with that one. Right. That might no longer be the case. I really like it. Um... But even without the expansion, this is a fantastic. Uh, Apparently, design. Kenny is the people, according to the that. people. <laughs> you don't Kenny. know what you just said. Actually, you several just people also say Mike is the people. Mike is the people, but Roy is the people junior. <laughs> the people's younger brother. The people are. <laughs> I'm fine with that. All right, so the, I'm not the, the older brother. Speaking of the people, their number 13 was 16 last year, and it was the first time it showed up on the list. Uh -huh. Although, hmm. last year was actually 2018, September. So remember, there was a year. So this sure. game had just come out, hmm. shot to the top. I would not be surprised if it goes higher. It is the number one of the current 
if you see people playing gateway games, and that is Azul. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. sure. The other oh, ones have heard not. Of it, heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe the other Azuls have shown up at all on the top 100s. Mm -hmm. They don't get the same amount of sheer love that the original has gotten. Mm. Um, yeah, I. Azul blew my mind when it came yeah. out because Plan B Games hit the ground running with this thing and it sold up the wazoo and still does. Still is very, very popular. This is one of those games where the first time you play it, you know you're playing something that special. It's like you, you, there, this game is just going to be around. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's so approachable. It's pretty. It's an abstract game. It has zero theme, but... It doesn't need it. You know what I mean? It just feels like it's it's a self-contained package. You can teach it to just about anybody. Um, gamers like it. Non-gamers like it. It's a, it, it has a, such a wide demographic. You right. know what I mean? It's good. It's good. I feel like According it has to a lot of theme. One comment on my review, though, there's a lot of theme. <laughs> I mean, which you know, I ignored. I mean, I know uh -huh. from laying tile. Normally, when you're laying tile, you're all laying them out and you're remember all drafting that? them one I do. at a time. Mm -hmm. Okay, I remember. And it stinks when someone like leaves you a tile. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're trying to like do like the backdrop for your kitchen, it yeah. just stinks. I hate that. You I have to put the one in there, and then you lose right. victory points. It's exactly like real life. Mm -hmm. I don't tile my own <laughs> kitchen, what? so whatever. <laughs> Moving on. Let's keep going. How are you? All right, my number 12 was... Have we mentioned, by the way, that we're going straight through to number one? We're going all the way. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah, we told people that. Don't, Buckle in. Don't. <laughs> Got to call we're him. Kidding. In for it. We're kidding. We're stopping at... 11. 12, right. if I can talk them into it. <laughs> Z's tapping out. We're just going to not do 11 at all. <laughs> My number 12 was number 4 last year, and then 10 before the year before that. So briefly dabbled in the top 10, then came back out. Oh, I got a taste mm. of the, the, the good part it's of it. It's been on my list for five years. And this is one of my favorite Euro games, too. I'm very, this has been Feast for Own, Lorenzo, and Magnifico, Viticulture. I put them all together because at the end of the day, I, well, Viticulture is my number 12. I have a hard put time. Come on, people. <laughs> Oh, the people have slow fingers. <laughs> people have been in the line I put them all together much, because it's really hard. Like, which one are you going to play at any given point? I don't know. They're all good. Yeah. The best one. Mm -hmm. So, Viticulture. And I was just talking about this this morning in the Q&A. When I first played this, I gave it a six. Whoa. Because you mean the original, though. I played right? the original, oh, and then he changed one rule. Grande. Adding the Grande Meeple, yeah. in which really changed the whole it game did. for me. I know we played the second the second version of it with the Grande, we played that pretty early on. We did. It came out. I said, I said, well, let's try it again. You've yeah, never played yeah. this. And we I was like, wait, this like, is much better. Yeah. yeah, we both liked it right away. Because mm -hmm. then Tuscany came out, and right. then we played through. And then the map with the Four Seasons, I was like, yeah. why would you never, why would you not play with sure, this? And, right. Oh, there's so much good stuff in it. Then they came out with Essential, blah, blah, blah. Viticulture culture just includes everything except for the uh, spaghetti, the noodles, and cheese. Yeah, that's not, that's not even in the New Tuscany. No, they pulled a bunch of that really crazy stuff yeah. out of the Tuscany. They did. I, if you buy I kept these mine essentials. because it's now like super weird stuff. Yeah. Do I, you play with it, though? Good lordy, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I own it. Isn't that what board gaming is about? <laughs> right. It's about owning. If you can see it is. I really like this, and it's also, <laughs> unlike the other two, Lorenzo and Feast for Odin, they're, they're barely thematic. Yeah, this, this one's is. pretty strong, actually, I feel. Do you get the grapes? You I age agree, the grapes? I agree. It works really well. This was on yours recently, yes. right? Yep. Yeah. All right. So Mike 40. was once right. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> wow. 12 Viticulture. He just gave me all kinds of garbage, and I was just going to sit there, and I was going to say good pick on City of Kings. I wasn't going to say anything bad about it at all. I doubt that. I don't think there's any chance of that being true. I am a nothing but quiet. My number 12 is a new game, a relatively new game, and there are some production issues that hinder it a bit, but not Why enough. Why is it 12? No, so I was going to say, <laughs> not enough. The gameplay is so good in Everdell that it's my number 12 game. Woo! I, That's higher than you. That is higher than me. I adore this game. It, you know, what I like best about Everdell... Have you okay. played this? No. You and me need to play this. No. What, 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 a I, treat. what I like best about Everdell is the pacing in the game. This has some of the best pacing in a game. You, the first time you sit down to play this and you start with your two workers and you're uh -huh. told that you've got a, uh, a maximum number of cards you can have in front of you, you're thinking to yourself, 
there is no way I'm even going to get eight cards in front of me. Right, you're going to have 15. Right, the there's first no time way. You play, you're like, I'm not going to get 15 cards. Matter? I've got two workers, I, and I can go here and get two berries, and I need six berries <laughs> to do this card. I'm not going to be able to do this. I agree. This game is so smart in the way that the pacing works, in the way the seasons work. The fact that you... It's so incremental. You start so slow, and by the end of the game, you now are able to figure out, oh, this is how I can do this. I can manipulate this, and I can use this card to allow me to get this card. And We've I can got to play this. It sounds like an engine-building oh, game. It's an absolute it's, engine-building game. Yes, of course. Why yeah. have I not played this? It is Because it's too cute for you? Yeah. No, it's, it is, <laughs> it it's is adorable. cute, but it's also a really solid oh, it's mechanically. it's extremely mean. There's it a, is. There's a... A squirrel with a with a, a shiv. With a razor. A shiv <laughs> and a shiv. With a shiv. I should have said yeah. shiv, yeah. It's the shiv squirrel. You have to pay three berries and some the twigs. The shiv squirrel? But it's the best three berries and twigs you'll ever have in your life. That's right. <laughs> Taking right. you out. No. It's so I'm good. You. It, 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 it's just so good. Um, and I just love... I just love that incremental pacing where it starts off slow and you feel... You're right. What are the issues you have with the components, um, you said? I, I feel like... No matter how old you are, you're not seeing the text on those cards. Yeah, you, they're you very, a, okay, a, okay, yes, the um, text is a little too and, small. And, and the tree is not necessary. I play with the tree. I don't care. I like the tree. But I if you're in the tree, if it's two players, yeah, then you have a way to avoid it. Right, yeah. If it's four, then you may not be able to see around it. And you don't need it. You can play without the tree. Um, although I liked it enough, I got the wooden tree. So those are my issues. Is that there's a are, wooden tree? A, oh, you are such a completionist when oh, it comes I, to some stuff. There's Aren't a wooden most. tree. He doesn't even like it, but he's like, but, I, but there's a fan. One, I'll get I'm it. getting the wooden tree. Aren't most trees wooden? <laughs> well, Roy, let's on, not get hung up on D Even the cardboard tree is technically wooden. This is okay, this fine. Is, this, is, this is real. I'm just saying. I'm just it's, saying. Anyway, well, Everdell well, is a fantastic, <laughs> fantastic game. And I have not even played the two most recent expansions that you said are, are yeah, wonderful, are too. Yes, yes. Uh, I can't wait to get those into There's this. There's three expansions, right? Yes, I've played the three, first. Yeah. We're really behind the curve on this, yeah. Roy. we got to get cranking. Uh, I've played I'm Pearl Bearer. I put them all at the same so. time. So. Pretty much. No, I, I, I'm this looking for This is in the library, it. right? They are. I just haven't had a chance to see I don't have access to that library. You're uh, about to in like that. four days. It's trapped it's in on a, boat. a truck somewhere. <laughs> you can play it now on the cruise. I'll and teach you, it to you. And you should play it. You really should. I'm not going to teach it to you. I just know. Be honest. <laughs> I <laughs> wouldn't, it out. I wouldn't listen anyway. Right. That's true. Good point. My number 12 is Everdale. Right, my number 12 is Skip hey, and hey. <laughs> <laughs> I know, guys. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We're All never right. sure there. All right, my number 12. So I've had several really, really new Look games like in this segment. Hey. <laughs> this game is not so new, but it is space. It's like two, it's like two so years that, old. That's familiarity. Know, right? um, this is Cosmic Encounter. Never heard of it. Ew. It's already been on your list. Boo. I know it's going to be on this man's list. You know it's true. He did call you a man. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, I'll take but it. <laughs> I love the the negotiation in this game is so much fun. I love the way like you you have these encounters and you have to like figure out how you're gonna deal with it. Are you gonna are does your opponent have a negotiate card? Are you gonna nope. be able to work this out? Do you need to ally with people on your side to like mm -hmm. hey if you come in here we're gonna get a colony together. Mm -hmm. Uh oh that person's ahead now I can't invite you. Oh but now they're joining the defense so they can get extra cards so they can try to win later. Like the whole dynamic of this game is awesome. There's tons and tons of different alien powers for this game. It's never the same anytime you play it. It's very group dependent. I feel like you need to play with people that are able yes. to do the negotiation thing and have fun with it. I've actually had like terrible games of Cosmic Encounter, but most of the games I've had of it have been amazing. You've had terrible games? They're, I don't even want to talk about <laughs> it because I'm trying to talk about how awesome this game is. There, there's. I played the game where some people just brought it down and just did obvious things. Like you realize if you do that, you're gonna throw him the game. He's like, yeah, I don't care. I played a game where like, a guy lied to me on turn one. Really? I was like, will you ally with me? He's like, oh no, I, I was a negotiate. The negotiate thing. I was like, oh, we both get our first planet, and he lied to me. I said, you realize there's still <laughs> like 90 percent of the game left here. Like out of the game. <laughs> yeah. I played, and he's just like, ha! And then he ended up doing pretty well anyway, so. Oh, wow. I've played this game and like it hasn't, like I've like started like not first. And it's not even gotten all the way back around to me before the game has ended and still had a blast. Just because you're playing on every single person's turn. Like the negotiation of okay. allying or not allying is super important in this game. I agree. He's right. It's, I've had that like, happen too. 
it's it's fun. It's a blast, and uh, I really enjoy it. Um, you better play a game if I'm sitting down to play a game. You still you play. always play you're the game. You're playing people's turn. Every single encounter, you're playing the game. I've won without even playing. <laughs> I've won by not playing. The thing I love about this game too no, this is game like is great, obviously. you're it's racing to list. five, and I'm always like trying to like, hey guys, let's all get to like like four together, you know, because you want to be part of that team that crosses oh, the finish line. Oh, there's big arguments then, yeah. Oh man, it's it's so much fun. Uh, Cause of encounter. I'm sure we'll talk about it later. Um, Doubtful, but let's move on. <laughs> no, it. My number twelve is a game called Claustrophobia, 1643. But what year? Oh. The year is 1643. <laughs> the tunnels? Hell tunnels. <laughs> I know this game has really good dice, right? Very good dice. I use those dice for every image I possibly can. <laughs> is this a joke I'm missing? Is he hate the dice? Every time, so every time we needed an image. In top ten list, and all he puts is the dice. And that's amazing miniatures. Oh, amazing that's right. That's, that's the one image the I had. I had I'm sitting there running the top ten list like, This is dice. from my review, I think. So finally, yes. Oh, beautiful. I, I like that. I really like this. It's a two-player only game in which uh, one side is playing the quote-unquote good guys. Nobody's really good in this game. Going into these caverns, doing some mission, uh, you know, whether it's discover something, go in and retrieve something and get back out, whatever. And then the other player is playing the minions of uh, the underworld. And they have like troglodytes and a demon, a big demon, and hellhounds and all this crazy stuff. And you are, you know, fighting it out, trying to achieve your side before the other side does theirs. I enjoy the game for quite a few things. I like it mechanically. I think it's very clever mechanically. There's a lot of interesting Euro game me mechanisms mm. where you're shutting down lines of activation while your life, is, your, your life points are going. It mm. also means you're less likely to activate a useful line. So that's neat. I really enjoy the exploration, discovering tiles. Not every scenario has that, but many of them do. I like um, the way you're rolling dice, not just for combat, but there is another set of dice for activation, what you're allowed to do on your turn. And that's clever. It's, it's a very engaging game, and then I also love on top of that that it's an, an hour, you know? Wow, okay. Depending on the scenario, it might be longer, it might be shorter, but you're probably looking at about an hour. Mm -hmm. So this is just a fantastic game. I really enjoyed already. I, I was a big fan of Claustrophobia, the predecessor to yeah, this. Yeah, no one has said if this was on your list last year or not. I've been looking. Uh, might not I mean, I, the, I'm talking about the regular Claustrophobia. I think that was in your top 100. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I oh, really, 49. There you go. I really like Claustrophobia. Do you like to play the good guys or bad guys better in this? Either one's fine, honestly. Did uh, they bring back the dino dude? No. You liked him, though, right? Yeah. That was. Can you transplant him? No, no way. It's too. These are too different. Wonder why they didn't do that. I don't know, but they might. I think there is more content coming at some point for this. I was very tempted to keep my original, but mm. I don't have the space for that nonsense. <laughs> this is the one that I did get rid of it uh, begrudgingly. Is that the right word? I got rid of the um, the sec the first printing of it. But the second one is better at the end of the day. It's more streamlined. There's a little more content in it. And yes, while I'm missing some things, if I'm keeping one, I'm keeping this. You just need to hold out for the Dinos and Donkeys expansion. You know that's coming. <laughs> that would be amazing. Claustrophobia. Donkey juice. Dinos and Donkeys. <laughs> the donkey's getting smashed by this thing. <laughs> oh. All right. Number 12 for the donkey. people. Poor has Bill. consistently <laughs> moved up. It came on the list five years ago, 64, then 60, then 21, then 18, and now 12. Wow. Just keep moving up. It's definitely very popular, despite the horrific first edition cover Elevator. and the somewhat lackluster second cover, and that is Concordia. Oh. This is much better than the original cover, yeah. but that just shows how good the <laughs> original cover was. However, Concordia, a game a lot of people really enjoy, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, it was nominated for the Kenner Spiel. Um, it did not win. That's a, you, know, you can tell that because it says the nomination. They, only, yeah. they tell you if they won. Sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, the idea of having a bunch of cards. This is the mechanism that you like. The bunch, and I like it too. A bunch of cards. You play them and do things. Um, I, they just came out with a team aspect of this in uh, 2018. That's salsa. Really? No, salsa was the first expansion. Oh, and that's right. No, then uh, Concordia Venus. That's what it was. Was the, the team one, okay. and that was pretty good. Um, and there you go. That's number 12 that's for people. That's a good game. That's a game I really do enjoy. It's not even my 
It's a game I did not think I would like when I first played it. Mm. Solid, solid Euro. Yeah. And the last one. Woo. We made Woo. a list today. I'm, I'm alive. alive. This is longer than Z ever plays a game. <laughs> All right. My number 11. Brand new to the list from this past year. <gasps> and this may change based on A, when I fit completely finished a game, and it, because it's a very story-driven game. And oh, But then again, they have a ton more content for it. Oh. Also from Awakened Realms, Tainted Grail. Wow. I know. It's moved up. Pat? I don't understand, Tom. I I guess I need to play this then. I know. I haven't played it, it either. Is it good? It's that good, huh? I don't know. I didn't ask. Is that good? Is it good? <laughs> it's it's a lot of fun to play. Simple yes would suffice. When you're lacking other players. Um, but you're not a solo gamer. So I'm it's not. A, it's a quandary, isn't it? Wow. it? It is. I really like the story in this game. Can you play the solitaire? Yeah, you can for sure. Are they, oh wait, I've seen this. Okay, that's the one where you play out, like you build a world on these cards. It looks yeah. similar to Seventh Continent, just in its look there. It does it? look. It, there's a lot of similarities to Seventh Continent, but in this one, it's a very strong story. I think you would like it because it's very grim, dark. I mean, the whole aspect of the story is that you grim are the backup dark, dude. Boy. You are the apprentice of a hero. Okay. Who didn't show up, and then everyone else is like, well, maybe you should go find out what happened to this guy. Okay, mm -hmm. I can do that. And it's with the name of the game, the Tainted Grail. The Holy Grail is in the game. Mm -hmm. King Arthur's kingdom is in the game, but it's not the way you would expect it to be. Because it's grimdark. It is grimdark. It and is. yet I really like it. I like how decisions you make affect the world around you. There might be a card here. Something happens. You take that card off, put a different card there. Again, it's very similar to Seventh Content, but the story here is just phenomenal. It's a really big book full of stories. Oh, and yes. what amazes me is that in the Kickstarter campaign, there's apparently two more whole campaigns. One wow. set before this and one set like 600 years later. So when I finish it, I'll have more content to go through. And there's also multiple ways to accomplish the mission. Like, for example, at one point we had an item and we could give it to two different people, very different people, and the way you do that then progresses you to the next thing. And I thought that was cool. You can go on very different branching paths. Mm -hmm. Really like it. The combat's fairly convoluted, I think. It's a neat combat system, but convoluted, and it's hard as all get out. I just restart every time I die, <laughs> like a computer game. I'm okay. like, doo -doo 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 -doo. actually what I meant to do. Yeah. Is it really? a single playthrough game like uh, Seventh Continent? Sure, but it's really long, and it's okay. put into 13 chapters, I think, 12 or 13 chapters, and you could, you can save at any point, really, okay. but okay. it's easy to save between chapters. Right. So, that so it is like Seventh Continent. I mean, that sounds like Seventh Continent. So Seventh Continent is a single three or four hour game. They just all kind of cross each other. This is one long story. When you're done with Chapter 1, you go to Chapter 2, then the events c compile upon themselves. So does okay. that push this up to your favorite game of 2019? It does. Uh, Clank Legacy was already on my list. Right. Um, yeah, I like this one better. I, I've been wow. able to play this one more, and and I want. Uh, once we're back from the cruise with Dice Tower West, I'll be taking one of the copies home, and I'm going to finish this game. Oh, nice, awesome. I really, really like it, and I'll probably play it though. Solitaire. I like playing with two people and all, but Solitaire is what I. Would, I mean, if there's nothing else. <laughs> my number eleven, Tainted Grail. All right, my Skip number up, 11 man. would, although I have not played Tainted Grail, I would imagine this is the polar opposite. This is uh, not a grim dark game at all. I've mentioned that um, Pick Up and Deliver uh, is own? one of my, no, is one <laughs> of my favorite uh, mechanisms. And to me, this is my favorite pure Pick Up and Deliver game. You do pretty much nothing but that. Um, it's a game that does not get a lot of attention, and it, I believe it's out of print. This Bombay. is Cinque Terre. I really really is that how you really? pronounce that because it sounded really wrong but maybe it's, a, it's italian i, I believe, believe it's the five villages cinque terre that's close yeah that's, yeah I, I believe so i, I heard so. this game you don't actually get to roll the dice you roll them at the beginning and then you're done you do you're setting the value basically this is you're going around to the five villages in your little trucks um you, are they're actually like almost like scooter trucks, right? And you're literally just going around to those spots. These are the five villages, and those are the different um, fields where you're gonna get the different produce. So you've got, you know, uh, uh, 
I think zucchini and tomatoes and lemons and grapes and I think garlic. Fried shrimp, boiled um, shrimp. And and it's it's a very simple mechanic where you can either gain cards or you can move or you can deliver pick up items from the uh, fields or you can deliver them to the different places. And the different dice are going to tell you what those villages want okay. and how much they're willing to give you for that produce, right? So okay. if you go here to, to Manarola, they will give you five for the grapes, okay? And so you have to be, it's, it's, it's a very simple sounding puzzle of getting the right produce to deliver to the right villages, but you're competing with all the other people who also, this is all open information, right? And you also have um, different contracts you're trying to fulfill. You're trying to get particular produce to particular villages. And so you're trying to set it up so that you do it at a time where your contract is matching up with the places that are giving you the most for it. So it's a very simple game. You could teach it to just about anybody, um, but it is Even really you. satisfying. <laughs> if you like pick up and deliver. I'm very confused. What, what's confusing? I'm kidding. Oh, if you like Pick Up and Deliver and the theme is appealing to you, the bright, beautiful artwork is uh, appealing to you, um, you really owe it to yourself. So to you've play never it. played this? Cinque Terre? Mm. Well, I, I'm saying you tend to like his designs. I do. I did not know this was a Chris Handy. I game didn't know either until I saw uh, the cover. Unfortunately, at Rio Grande, it came out, they had the one printing, and it went away. Uh, you, you just well, does not argue, look good, I'll tell you that. I'd argue that, so. no. I think the cover's nice and pretty. Oh, the cover's but the nice. Game no. is if I hadn't looked at this game, assuming I don't know who Chris Handy is, mm -hmm. right? Who well, I do, and I do like his stuff. But if I just saw the game, I picked it up off a shelf, yeah. saw that cover, turned it over, and something resembling that was on the back, I'd put it right back on the shelf. Not that's to mention, to come me. on, Mike, this came out in the middle of Rio Grande's very mediocre quality. Th and that's a good point. Phase. That they, is true. It they was... were not putting out high quality components That's at all. a very good point. Now they've since, I think they've really improved in the past yeah, year yeah, or so. And the components in this game are quite good, actually. I, I have no issue with the components. And I'm, I'm surprised art is obviously a very subjective thing. I think this is a beautiful game. I Actually, you're the first person, Z, and I, and I want you to take this in. Maybe I want to see can it in I, person. Can I second or third? It's maybe gorgeous. I That's right, Mike. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah, sorry, I need to buddy. show you. You're off the island. I'm going to bring my copy in so you okay. can actually see the physical components. Bring it in, I, please. I don't think it's doing itself And any it's hard to replace, you're saying, yeah? Yeah. Bring it in. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. We'll take right. care of it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Cinque Terre, the five village of a wonderful pickup right, and deliver game. Give us another space game. Here this we go. This game is not space. It's fantasy. Lied. Okay. <laughs> is that a space or fantasy or fantasy space? Listen, I am a simple nerd, okay? I like space. I'm a man of simple tastes. I like, I like fantasy. I mean, they keep making the games. I guess they make them for people like me. How about okay. delivering produce? This That's... game is older than I am. This so is was a Cosmic game. Cosmic Encounter, buddy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, I have some Wait, new games on That's actually. Oh, I know what it is then. That's not fantasy. That's sci fi. No. No, this is a fantasy game. You don't like this game. You give it a poor review. This is Wiz War. This is a game. You're right, it is older than you, and yes, it sucks. <laughs> helped inspire like games like Magic the Gathering, but it's like got this like you're you're basically wizards that are trying to race to try to gather treasures in a labyrinth and bring them back to your your starting area. You can either get a point by gathering treasures you, or you can get a point by destroying other wizards. And just the card play in this is super interesting because you're drawing through all these crazy wizard spells and like blasting each other and building up combos. It's got the whole counter spell thing like I play this fireball at you and I counter it back and then I put up a, a wall of dirt and it bounces off that and goes around this corner and it's just this interesting game of back and forth. I have like 3D printed all these walls for it and 3D printed like all sorts of different cool stuff for it and I really like the way the game plays. It's definitely a game that you can't take too seriously but it's a blast and fun to play and I really just had a lot of fun playing WizWare. I played it with all sorts of different people at a ton of different game groups and it's just been a ton of fun to play. I'm I feel like I should like it. These are, those are green, are those are wizard hats? Yeah, yeah. so there's a lot of stuff that like helps They definitely different don't cards. look like green poop. They absolutely do not look like green poop. Yeah, I mean, you barely use that sort of stuff. It's like just to <laughs> say all this this card is affecting that color wizard. But right. you can transform into like different monsters. Like, oh, you know, now the I'm Black Minotaur. Rose Wars, I think, would kill this for me. Hmm. Gotcha. Have you played that one? No, I haven't played Black Rose, Black, Black Rose Wars yet. But I really. Five times now. <laughs> I really enjoy the zaniness of this game a lot, too. So. Hmm. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a lot of fun, and I enjoy uh, Wizard. So. All right.
I wasn't expecting this one. I haven't played it. I've played it at like the retreat and like a whole bunch of different really? things. This is one of the games that I always like to take with me to a bunch of these different things because I know Tom doesn't have it in the library for whatever reasons. Mm. Is this not a nice library? No. It might be getting picked up at Dice Tower West though. I would put this in the library yeah, just because yeah. I don't like it. I mean, I would put it in. That's yeah, a lot of fun. I, do you know where I could get a copy with 3D pieces? Because that would be a really good one for the library. Of Cinque Terre? Cinque Terre. <laughs> that game, uh, 3D Mike, you have to persuade Cinque. me to put that one in the library. Uh, fine. It's a good game. I, 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 if he says it, I believe it. <laughs> my number 11 is a two-player only game, one that's been on um, my list and just sort of a game I've, I've felt passionate about for a long time, as does Tom. This is Targi. Oh, my yeah. number 11. Oh, it's because of you, man. I would never play this if you hadn't told me about yeah, it. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Get over it. Yeah, I'm going over it. Uh, this is... Uh, Tom is, uh, doesn't deserve this game. It's so good. That's how I feel about it. <laughs> There's finally an expansion for this coming out in the year 2020. Hopefully. <laughs> Don't delay it. And I just enjoy the mechanism. It's definitely a mechanical game, right? The theme here is nice window dressing, but it's 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 not a thematic game. I don't care the mechanisms and what you're doing in this game and what's what's the way it's the ways it's engaging you to react and to adapt to make progress are all very enjoyable. I always have a blast playing this game. This idea of deploying your workers to locations around the grid. Mm. And you'll be taking those actions as well as the actions where your workers would intercept in the grid. Smart. Means that you have to think about a lot of stuff. And you are, there's a, a nice amount of turn angst also when you place out one worker. And then you sit and wait for your opponent to put one out and you just know they're going to mess you up. Yep. <laughs> yeah. 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 They're going to You know? Yeah. So I love it. I, I, I really enjoy this game. So it's just absolute fun. It's really If good. you haven't played this... And you enjoy two-player gaming. You want you want one that does something that I think will really surprise you for a two-player game. This will do that. All right. Targi is all right. People, very good. This is really interesting. So the People's Choice agrees with me here, and on my list, Viticulture went from four last year to twelve this year, and on the People's Choice, Viticulture went from three last year to eleven this year. Wow. We're thinking on the same lines yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I don't know what happened there, but anyway, yeah, it's still very high, oh, sure. right? And just a couple other games busted their way into the top ten, pushing it down. But Viticulture is in the Stonemeyer games that are very popular. You may hear about more. Who knows? Um, but this one's very high up yeah. there. Uh, I, again, this is one that I see people play. That's one of the things that I feel pretty confident when I look at the People's Choice list. I see people playing these games. Sure. Yeah, Especially absolutely. when I get to these. As, like no, from 40 on up, I see people Tedder playing. On there, that's you're, not. Sure. <laughs> you're not. You're <laughs> not. I agree. You're no you longer should, the People's but Choice. you're not. Yeah. All righty. Thank you, folks, for helping us break our record. We had 3,190, I think, wow. was our top. Wow, okay. That's awesome. You're people. awesome. Tomorrow, 4,000. Tell your friends, enemies, it. and relatives. Actually, I said the same word twice. But anyhow, <laughs> um, come back tomorrow for the top 10 games of all time. You can guess what they are maybe by this point. Mm. You could probably get at least mine and Z's if you know us well enough. Although maybe not Z, because I know his is more shook up than mine. It this, is a little shook. I bet I could guess five of your 10. I'm back. These, I'm going to do it. These are some good games. Here's a, all right. Some good games. Our Kickstarter is going on right now. DiceTowerKickstarter.com. Go check it out. Um, and thank you for those of you who already did. Well, this has gone on long enough. I gotta go bathroom. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Mike Delicio. I'm Roy Candy. I'm Z Garcia. And this thing. <laughs> Happy Bye. Giving.